It's time for Mac Break Weekly. The uh, news is out. You can get your WWDC tickets. We'll have details, a look at the web page, and some ideas about what Apple might be talking about at their yearly developer conference. Good news for fans of Bob's Burgers. And one of our favorite sponsors has been acquired by one of our favorite fruit companies. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 601, recorded Tuesday, March 13th, 2018. Built in Butterwell. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Molecule. Molecule is the world's first molecular air purifier that reduces symptoms for allergy and asthma sufferers. For $75 off your first order, visit Molecule.com and enter the promo code MACBREAK. And by FreshBooks. It's the easy-to-use cloud accounting software for small business owners. Try it free for 30 days at FreshBooks.com slash MacBreak. And by Rocket Mortgage, by Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash MacBreak. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we talk about the latest Apple news with three of the best. Renee Ritchie from iMore.com. Is <laughs> did you just have an earthquake in Montreal? You have cameras all over cameras. the place. Look at all those cameras. I just switched. I well, no, I want to show with you and Andy and, and Alex every week, Leo. This is the end result of that. Ah. There's a camera <laughs> over your left shoulder. Coming. Wait a minute. That's a, is that an HT Vi HTC Vive sensor? Or is that yes. over your left shoulder? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, then there's a, uh, a top-down camera mount. There's some yeah. lights. There's some other... I, like every time, every time I'm on this show, I buy more cameras. Technically, the Vives is not a camera. It's, uh, I don't Display. think... Display. I don't know what it is. No, the, the little things you put up in the corners of the room. Oh, the... the what do they call those? Lighthouses? They're laser sensors? Yeah, but I don't... They're, they're simpler. They rotate. I know there's moving stuff spinning in there. They ingest the world. They're a world ingester. <laughs> That's what they are. Andy Nako from the Chicago Sun Times is here. Hello, Andrew. Hey there. Hi there. Ho there. Good to see you again. And from Washington D.C., the nation's capital, at PixelCore.com, Alex Lindsay, who was just hello, here hello. a few days ago, but now he's back. I was in D.C. Nice to see you. We're Alex. getting our, we're getting some we're getting some studios uh, set up, and and so I'm out here for the next couple of weeks. Uh, nice working with the guys. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, all three of you have gathered together to uh, celebrate the, uh, you know, if, if Apple buys Texture, how, how, how long can it be before they buy me? <laughs> I'm just saying I'm for sale, Apple. It's coming. For sale. We it's don't coming. know how Pre much. Prepare. Texture, our sponsor, which is a Netflix for magazine, $10 a month, gives you 200 magazines. Uh, now an Apple property. You said you, uh, you talked to them about their plans, Renee Ritchie? Uh, I well, I started seeing different reports. Like some reports said that Apple was going to be folding, that Eddie Q had said that Apple was going to be folding it into the news app. And when you, CNN did not make the video or the audio of, I mean, for a TV show, they did not make anything available immediately. So I managed to get, you know, thanks to the generosity of some people, I managed to get a bootleg copy and very carefully go through it. And the Is this question of his was very South leading. by Southwest talk? Yeah, South yeah. by Southwest talk with uh, with Daryl. Um, and he, he said, you know, like the, the question was very leading, like what is Texture going to do for Apple News? And at the end, Eddie talked about the integration of them. And then a lot of people reported that as Apple folding it into um, Apple News. And when I asked about it, they said like no decisions have been made yet. And that could just be them covering their bases because maybe that's what they're thinking of doing, but they don't know if it'll work out the way they want or if the subscription service is more valuable some other place or if it's going to go in iBooks because that's going to be – iBooks is going to become books, a whole different app. Uh, so there's a lot of possibilities. I think they just want to keep their options open. But they did say a couple of things. One is that they're going to keep all the existing apps going because they have a big subscriber base. They have iOS, Android, Kindle Fire, and Windows. I think Windows 10, but it might just be a generic Windows app. Uh, and all of those are going to keep going. And everyone who's going to have the same functionality they've had before, it's only available in the U.S. and Canada. So it's not an international app by any means yet. And it's partly owned by Rogers in Canada. Uh, so mm -hmm. strange partnerships there. It was founded by uh, publishers. Yeah, I guess, I it was going. founded by Condé Nast and Hearst. I think Meredith has a stake. To be a Rogers. Hulu for magazines, yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. I mean, it's easy to see how a lot of the conversation got misconstrued. He was, uh, I, I thought it was a lot of interesting stuff he was talking about, about how uh, he, the point he was making was that it was part of a larger sort of uh, philosophical initiative to uh, – Talk about the Apple News app as curated news, as a place where at some point some human with an IQ larger than room temperature has has looked at this news article and said, "Okay, this is not garbage. We will we will let the we will let the Apple News app see this." Uh, and so he was talking about texture as uh, magazine content because it's been bought and paid for because uh, because it's not uh, generally uh, news of the of the last forty five seconds. It's a little bit better vetted so he felt as though it's a better addition for that larger portfolio of like apple news and apple content as this is a safe place you can trust what we're talking about uh, about right here i'm sure it'll go it'll be uh, apple treat it the same way they did prss the digital magazine <laughs> platform they acquired three years ago that was never heard from again uh, well, I mean, they had a long record of, I mean, like there's the newsstand bodies still littering the streets. Uh, that the, was it, um, the Rupert Murdoch property. I'm blanking on the name. The oh, Daily. Oh, yeah, the I Daily. Mean, but those were, daily, those were shut down by the Daily. The PRSS is probably the closest uh, thing uh, to the texture acquisition. Apple bought them in September three years ago, almost four years ago. Uh, and if I go now to the PR, can you show my screen? If I go now to the PRSS website, it's a vital and growing concern. No, this website cannot be reached. <laughs> they they just basically took it over and shut it down. So I think all bets are off as to what Apple might do with this. It's clear that well, Apple doesn't it, want an app called Texture in its portfolio, does it? Yeah, I would. I could see that. Really? I, I, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Alex. I, I, I think that... Uh, I think one of the things that that Apple may try to do, and, and maybe I'm wishful thinking, so we don't we don't know, but I think that it does give you access to the idea of approaching publishers to possibly add more content uh, that is more uh, interactive uh, into your content, into the content that's being distributed. So you know, the, I think that the big the big problem texture is great. I'm I'm a subscriber. I'm a user, uh, but you still feel like you know this is still kind of taking an old technology and putting it into your iPad. Um, as opposed to really building content that's designed for that next, um, whatever that next thing is. Well, um, uh, I think does, that is it, how, how, how all in is Apple on Apple news? Is that still important to Apple? It's, app? it's both important and it's, not it. It's, it's not to, to I'll, I'm sorry, I'll make it very quick. The, I think that Apple news, is not so much the app itself so much as the conduit. So long as it's part of that dashboard, the first thing you want to look at when you wake up and the thing you want to keep dipping into as the day goes by, I think that's a very important strategic uh, solution for them. So this would make sense as something that would, as they, as Eddie Q did or did not say, what was the actual quote, Renee? The, I, I actually I actually spent part of the night transcribing it, so I would, I would have it available. All right. Uh, so the question was, how does acquiring Texture advance the grand strategy of Apple News? And at the very end, uh, Q says that, well, basically I'll tell you what the whole thing he says is, I think there are a few things that we've always cared about at Apple News. First of all, we wanted to bring great articles from trusted sources in a beautiful layout. And that was the premise of Apple News we started with. If you do that, lots of customers will use it and love it. Obviously, Texture with the brands I just told you about, they have magazines from Esquire to Vanity Fair to Times to Sports Illustrated, some of the best magazines in the world. They have some incredible content and con content takes a long time to create. So they are in-depth articles. And so we're really excited about bringing that into Apple News to augment all of the other stuff that we have from thousands of other publishers but the key to our but our key is curation we want the best articles we want them to look amazing we want them to be from trusted sources so that we don't have a lot of the issues that have been going around in the marketplace so i can see why that was synopsized as they're going to fold it into apple yeah. news that's the, sort of the, what it the sounds other, like well, I mean, the other point it is Schrodinger's sorry, app in several ways. Uh, sorry, there, it is Schrodinger's app in several ways because it came out. It was it launched in the U.S. It quickly went to the U.K. and Australia, and then it stopped. Apple put out Apple Music in a hundred countries at the same time, right. the same day. They haven't done that for news, but they have spent a lot of time improve, improving the features of news. It's got Siri-based um, machine learning intelligence. They've been doing a wonderful job. Now they're doing March Madness, but they did the Winter Olympics and they did the Oscars. And they've got a huge team of editors. They've hired an editor in chief, and I, I think. What Apple sees is almost like they they think they have part of Tim Cook's mandate, and and it was Steve Jobs' thing too. They want to 
save news, which sounds ludicrous on its face, but they look at Amazon and Google and they have these problems where they basically took other people's content and monetized it and sucked all the revenue out of it and it's destroyed a lot of publishers. They said, come on, we'll put you in newsfeed, we'll put you in Facebook video. And then he turned around and said, oh, sorry, we don't mean it. And those companies went bankrupt. And I think that that Apple has almost like an Aaron Sorkin-esque romantic um, feeling of what news can be and what news should be and how it can power and inform and and create communication and they want to as much as they can use ios as a platform for doing that similar to how when they acquired beats they use that as a platform to sort of create an all-encompassing music library in the sky yeah there's a advertising came up a lot uh, during that conversation uh, in which this when you're getting content from these magazines you're not necessarily getting content that was is needs to be subsidized by advertising this is a point that eddie q was making that whereas uh, stuff that come that comes online at, at some point you have to get people to click you have to get people to actually imprint an ad on the thing and this will help to elevate the level of content to have this uh, texture content it's uh, it's more complicated than that however a lot of the you, f you forget about how how much newspaper rev ad revenue came not from people advertising yeah. not from people advertising you know the things that you see advertised uh, uh, on uh, on the web typically but you're talking about classified ads you're talking about legal ads you're talking about just like the weekly uh, uh, the weekly sh uh, supermarket supplement you're talking about things that they things that would have gone away anyway uh, uh, unless uh, unless uh, someone firebombed an LCD plant and made sure that phones and uh, phones and tablets never existed, uh, so it's a little bit more complicated than that. But this is this is the first time I've heard Apple talk about news as something other than oh well these other people have this app we're going to have this app too. It's interesting for them to brand it as part of their overall company identity as look it's a nightmare out there because of largely largely because it's ad based and profile based content we're a safe place where you can be we're not going to tell you that it's the safest it's it's a objectively no danger of anything happening ev everywhere but at least you can trust if you click on an apple news app that there are very, there are fewer shenanigans going on than maybe uh, you would find elsewhere on facebook and google is the is the business model for texture is it the same as Netflix where or not not necessarily Netflix but let's say a lynda.com or, or something like that where the are the everyone getting an equal amount of of income or are they um, are you know are they getting it like per sub like we would with cable they or, haven't said, or are they, they haven't said anything views? yeah because that'd be really They're a private company see. so they haven't disclosed almost anything right because it's interesting yeah. to, it'd be interesting to know whether it, it, it's based on like how many people are reading your magazine as opposed to like maybe you get a base amount per sub and then a, a higher amount based on usage and, and I'd just be curious uh, you know how that how that looks but I, I do think that you know what Apple gets access to depending on how they use it is um, a, a lot of walled gardens a lot of the, the content in those magazines are not is not ending up in Facebook uh, is not ending up uh, in you know in a lot of these yeah. things because they don't make it available unless you're a subscriber and so so I think that those are things that are now going to be accessible in the news feed um, that haven't been uh, you know, and it may increase that. Um, if you feel like you can publishing through texture is going to give you a larger market and you can end a sustainable market, you may be more interested in doing that than putting it up on the web. Yeah, oh, well, particularly if it income for publishers. Well, <laughs> but, uh, but particularly if uh, this deal gives them the launching pad from which to develop or develop deeper relationships with magazines like the New Yorker with Esquire, because they have deep, deep deep content and so we're not just talking about nostalgia buffs who uh would like to read uh, 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 uh frank sinatra has a cold by harlan ellison which i recommend you because you seek and find out because it is a hell of an article but it means that when there's a piece of news like, like when, when hardly when harlan ellison finally dies there's going to be lots of obituaries but here is the place you can find one of his most important pieces of writing and it will surface right to the top when there's if you look uh, for that one though you won't find it it's gay to lease but other than that yeah I'm sorry. My part. <laughs> well, I would like to read Harlan Ellison's right. version you're of that. Absolutely. However, <laughs> oh, no, I, I forget because I, 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 I forgot because one of the key scenes in that is Harlan Ellison picking a yes. fight. With it's a wonderful my... article which everybody should read. So yeah, uh, my, I don't, I don't, I don't pretend to have inside knowledge. Although, as tech, because Texture has been a sponsor, we've talked to the founders and we've talked to them before. So I'm not speaking from inside knowledge, but uh, a because it was founded by. Four big magazines. It's founded by Condé Nast, which owns the New Yorker, and among other things. Yep. Uh, the Hearst Corporation, which owns a bunch of magazines. Meredith, which owns a bunch of magazines and TV stations. Rogers. Does Rogers own magazines in Canada? 
they own everything we yeah. own. Yeah. And, uh, and KKNR, which is an investment company, which probably owns magazines. So, you know, and I do know that they've been ad adding magazines over time. I'm sure that they have a, when you get the magazine on texture, you get the ads that are in the magazine. So those are not removed. Yep. I, it'd be my guess that you get some money from it because it's in lieu of a subscription, right? So I would guess there are payouts to the, I don't know, again, this is not inside knowledge, but I would guess there are payouts to the magazine companies because instead of buying the New Yorker subscription, you buy a $10 subscription to Texture and you get the New Yorker. I would guess that the New Yorker's happy to get that buck or whatever uh, because that's at least something. And they still have, and they can add it to their circulation for the advertisers. I just don't see... I just don't see Apple keeping it going because it's just it's it's orthogonal to what Apple's all up to already. And frankly, I got to say, the news app is far from the best news app on on iOS. So I, I, Apple needs to do if they if they care about the news app, they got a long way to go. I mean, I, uh, it's it comes on every iOS device, so I guess it's probably got some real traction. But did it's you not see the great... numbers he mentioned? Like he said, some things like the New York was it the New York Times or maybe another or CNN. He said was getting something like sixty to seventy percent of their views through the news app now. Yeah, and as as you uh, pointed out, industry since, changing since Facebook has really dumped on these guys. Yeah. they're probably very thrilled to be. You know, of course, you got the stock comment from all the owners saying, "Oh, we're great to Apple's. What a great company to be working with." <laughs> we blah, didn't blah, lose blah. our money on the app. Well, that's well, the thing. It could I, very well be that the the app is a failure, and these com I don't know again, but that the app oh. is a failure, and that these companies are saying, "Oh God, let's just get out of this." Oh, thank God, yeah, Apple will take us back. I, I don't think it's. I true, think. But. I think that. I think that. I think Apple has two two things that they they could be doing is basically working with these publishers and saying, "Hey, give us." One article, two articles a week, or one article, two articles um, a month for app, the Apple News. It's still going to drive people if they want to buy the rest of the magazine to go back. Yeah, and that might be a better texture. pitch. Yeah, that might be a better. You pitch. know, so so now they have access to all these articles that are not available anywhere else on the web except for Apple News. So right now, Apple News is mostly scra scraping stuff that is is non exclusive. So being able to have exclusive stuff that's only available for Apple News as samples that would then drive back to uh, online subscriptions, I think is one one area that, that, that could be really interesting for the publishers, um, as well as I still think that Apple at some point may consider you know, interactive magazines or interactive content to be something that lets them step iOS ahead of all the other, you know, basically away from Kindle, um, you know, because Kindle can't, could never keep up with that. And, and Android would have to build a unified solution to, to keep up with I'm it. interested well, in the model for Apple News. It has big ass banner ads, which I find very repulsive. This is a big banner ad. Uh, and then it also seems to love the Huffington Post which I don't think that's my traffic. That's not generated from my interest, which this supposedly is. I don't get is. Huffington Post. I get, you don't? I get other but you're in articles. Canada. No, Do you guys get Huffington Post? Because I get no, a ton no of Apple it. News in, there's no Apple News in Canada, so I have to pretend oh. that I'm in the U.S. Oh, you don't to get have it at all. Running, so it acts like... No, I, I, I basically have a, I have an iPhone that is basically set up entirely as if it's a U.S. iPhone, and I have Apple oh, okay. News on there. I'm just assuming um, but that... But it does skew towards what you click on and what you... You can set it up initially... My thing with this, though, is I think this is going to be very similar to how they went with Apple Music. They got they acquired Beats, yeah, which exactly. had a basic subscription service, and then they build that out so that – because remember, Apple's thing is that there's only a certain amount of iPhones they can sell. Eventually, they'll get to the point where uh, you know, they've, they've saturated a lot of that market, and everything they can do to add value to the iPhone and to get incrementally more revenue from a customer – because Apple now talks about – Revenue per customer, not just overall revenue. Uh, if you get someone to subscribe to Apple Music, if you get someone to subscribe to uh, whatever they end up calling Texture, or even if they just end up calling it Texture, that's ten dollars, ten more dollars per customer per month, and that provides you you stay with Apple because they're giving you all these services. And maybe there's a backlash against bots and against fake news and against social news, and people want to be able to access the newspapers, even if it's nostalgia, the newspapers and magazines that they love. And Apple can offer that as a service, and they can grow that out, and you'll have your and then they can make products around it, like Apple Music powers the HomePod, and who knows what other devices they're working on, but maybe the magazine becomes an integral part of, of iPad or whatever tablet experience they're working on. It just gives them more content to showcase on their, on their platform. And we're not even talking original content. Like Netflix went from catalog aggregation to original content at some point. Apple's doing that for TV now, but... Who knows if Apple editorial even starts becomes more active, like App Store editorial has become, and then you start having articles that are chosen and vetted by Apple's team. It becomes very interesting. Yeah, well, that, that, that's ex that's exactly right. Apple Apple is associated with the success of the iPhone, but at some point, people are not going to be wanting iPhones anymore, and they're already being outpaced by uh, other platforms 
largely only because of the diversity of hardware that's available to them, the more they if they want to make money from everybody out there, not just people who are Apple fans, because that's a dead end. Uh, at, so, at some point, it's not they're not going to have enough money to do what they want to do. They're not going to have enough money to have the sort of firepower they want to have. So it really is in their best interest to maintain this platform, maintain this as a platform, build out Apple News as a service that like a uh, like a pocket where ev no matter what kind of device you have, no matter what what it's hooked up to, you can still access this content. And if it also helps to funnel people into buying iPads. All the better, uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I don't think this this means by any means that they're going to be shutting down that uh, that for any other platform. Because again, Apple, how many times have Apple said that we are really, really, really bullish on becoming a service company? Uh, because again, they they are way smarter than we are when it comes to looking at the at the hardware market. It's going to be a problem if they're just going to be relying on selling hard premium hardware at forty percent markup. So the more they if they can get seven billion dollars to give them a penny each, that adds up. I, I, for the record, I, I, I will say that within two years, I think that texture will only be available on the iOS. I agree, a hundred percent. I don't think it'll take two years. I'm just saying, I'm being conservative. I think, I think by well, they July. still have Beats on Android. <laughs> you know, or where they, yeah, I mean, this, this is, they didn't spend see, billions I, on it for one thing. This is no, but I think the point is that once you have the family plan, it's for the ex. Like you have three iPhones in your family, one Android, two iPhones, two Androids, and you get the family plan. It means it's more valuable to you because yep. even the Android people can use it, and it's very little maintenance to keep going and it is a little bit of, like you're you're getting a, more of a taste of the apple experience because apple music on android is not a terrible app i have it on my pixel yeah. yeah i think i think that you'll get uh, texture on a non-ios devices you just won't know that it's texture i think that at some point you think the branding apple will products. go away uh, yeah, but I, mean, I, I think that it's some. I think at some point they'll figure out how to make it into a subscription model through iBooks uh, or even through Apple Music or whatever they rename that to after they realize that people are coming to Apple Music for things other than music. They, they, there's still no clarity on where do you go for this new series that uh, <laughs> that the creator of, of Bob's Burgers is going to be creating for them. Do they go to Apple Music? Do they go to Apple? Uh, do they go to, go to iTunes? So I think that there's going there's there's going to be a convergence, not so much of Mac Mac OS or iOS. The more important one is going to be the convergence of their content delivery and i'd be really surprised if they don't try to make that multi-platform if they if they if they decide that they want to add more interactivity they'll kill off all the other ones because otherwise you end up in lowest common denominator development and so uh if they decide just to keep on letting magazines be magazines and be basically 2d things that are on your tablet then they'll then they could probably mm -hmm. last a bit longer but but i think that as soon as they decide we want to uh, uh we want to do something that's different or to, to now they have access to all these publishers and they have possibly they, they grow to a point where they have they are the access to the outside world for these publishers um, gives them a lot of leverage to go back and do the things that they tried to do when they stalled out you know basically they you know had no leverage they went to a bunch of textbook companies and um, decided that iBooks was uh, not a good market to go into um, and so uh, I think that I still think that there's a massive future in that in that area um, no one has a really good development platform and I think that this could be something that could lean towards that but um, if they decided to do that then they would get rid of the other platforms pretty quickly because they're just uh, they're dead weight Apple has so much money this probably I mean they had 50 million dollars in uh, venture funding it probably didn't cost them more, more than a hundred million, which is the really money a rounding Eddie, error Eddie for Q Apple. Sofa cushions. Yeah, it's rounding yeah. error. Yeah. I think honestly, they looked at it and they said, "This would be great. We could open a, a conversation with all these publishers." That's all they. I think it's a. Re, it's about relationships. I don't think they really. Uh, I, in fact, that's, I really wonder if they want to be in the content business. I mean, that's what Eddie Q said, but that's his job, right? To be in the content business. I really oh. wonder if they want to be in that business at all. No, they're spending way too much money to not be interested in what they're buying. I mean, they're it's well, it was this one, one or two I doubt this was expensive. I know you're they're spending well, no, a billion this, on TV, but but also in the same interview, who's uh, I think he was asked about buying buying something as big as let's say Sony, which they could possibly do, and he uh, Eddie no. was. He basically said that we're not we we don't do our we don't do well buying huge companies that have them then have to sort of dilute Apple. We buy small companies that can make Apple better, make Apple more Apple e, so to speak. Exactly. Just so I think, I, like I said, if it, if if the acquisition of Texture is the, the is the the Mrs. Dash seasoning that makes a bunch of different bunch of different products better, I think that that's a smart uh, smart yeah, move. I think it's that I makes think it's much more like kind of something around that, and. Uh, uh, honestly, I mean, well, let me ask you guys: What is the best news app on iOS? We, t we the reason I'm interested. We covered this on iOS today earlier. Uh, uh, it's the New York Times app. 
So that's single publisher. How about you, I, uh, I, Alex? Sorry. Every morning, I'm every morning for the last five, I don't know five or six years. I, I use Flipboard. I don't, yeah. I'm, I, as you know, I know it's a little bit old to you, but to me, it's like the the, the usage of it and the way it works and everything else uh, totally works for no, me. No, in fact, uh, I started using Flipboard again. Lisa, my wife, said you should really try Flipboard. It's great, and I, she's right. And it's it's everything Apple News could be, but isn't, in my opinion. What do you like, Renee? I know you're in Canada, so that. Maybe Jonas is you a little bit. You can't really get Apple News officially. That's too. No, bad. I start off without. I start off with Apple News, uh, and then I also go through Flipboard and I go through Nuzzle. Um, although, like that's changed a lot because, again, being in Canada, maybe Americans are as tired of it or or, or as feel as powerless as I do that a lot of the social news is just not stuff I want to read. Yeah, anymore. this is actually probably not a good time to ask this question because for the last year, news has been very much tilted in one direction thanks to our president and it, it it yeah it gets it gets kind of mo monotonic it's boring after a while you want to read something different maybe apple news is well, good we also for that. see the we all see the opposite effect from that. I mean, like our, our traffic is, is greatly skewed now because people never used to read about politics. They used to read about technology. It was fun. And now everyone's reading about politics. Yeah. And they're not reading about yeah. technology. I, I would much. say the same so thing's happening distortion. in a technology podcast. Actually, all podcasts yeah. that aren't about Donald Trump. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, it, yeah, people, people. So that's what they're reading right now. That'll, you know, that that shifts back and forth. I, I, I mean, texture is really only a small part of the conversation. The larger conversation is what is... What is Apple's thinking, and where are they going, and why? Why these content acquisitions, uh, and and uh, so it doesn't really matter whether Texture lives or dies in app, under Apple's wing, as much as it's an indicator of what Apple's up to. Um, I will tell you this, Lolio, is that when I opened up uh, Texture to talk about it yesterday, right front and center was the entertainment article about Avengers: Infinity Wars, and I would probably not have seen that because I don't go to newsstands <laughs> anymore, and it wouldn't have shown up. And you it, read it, it cover to cover, words, I'm maybe. sure. <laughs> it is so long, so in depth, and it's presented like it is in the magazine. And I know that's like the interface is is not great. Sometimes you page sideways to get at to get. To go through stories, sometimes you page up and down, like, and, and it should always be consistent. And sometimes it does look like a bit of a rendered PDF, and other times it's fine. I mean, I, I put up with comic book interfaces that are sometimes just as bad, if not worse. Um, but it was the it was just having it there. And again, I gave texture to my mom for for Christmas, and she loves it it's because a she great was buying product. The all who, these magazines. Yeah, the people who use it are going to be very upset if Apple doesn't continue it. But can anybody think of an app that Apple has acquired and then continue to run as a standalone app? Work, uh, fake, uh, um, file maker? Workflow, most recently. Yeah. Workflow. Yeah, yeah I'm workflow wondering how long it. that has for this world. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll eventually that, become they, Siri They Siri bought Workflow for the engineers. They didn't buy Workflow for the app. Well, no, I think I think that their lack of – they're pivoting away from AppleScript and other – Others, other like 1980s style scripting environments, and towards something a little bit more modern and visual. I think that's, I think it's very, very much in line. So with maybe it is the app, yeah. Yeah, they apps, they absolutely need automation. You're not. We, we, most of the people we we talk to, uh, to uh, on the show are people are individual users, but there are people who need to set up 400 iOS devices at the same time, or they need to wipe. There are uh, there are examples of applications like uh as you as you mentioned uh, andy and there's logic and final cut that apple purchased and kept going as applications i'm not you know uh, okay. Clar claris works i mean and and you know uh file maker for sure <laughs> but what about apps like what about uh iphone and ipad apps is there much of a history of that it seems i mean i think workflow might be the exception that proves the rule frankly yeah. It, it is an exception. A lot of them, they do hire for the talent, and then those like the like they bought color, and that team went and redid the photo app. There's far um, so more, see there's yeah. There's far places. more apps that Apple bought the company and then killed the app. Well, I mean right. Siri, famously, right? Siri, yeah. There's actually an article. But again, Beats, they the Beats they have Beats became the Apple Music app. It's just it's not Beats anymore, but it's a very similar right. app, right. and it's still on Android. Right. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense because they needed a streaming music app, and they had they had eschewed streaming music for so long they really had nothing. And they need you know. subscription and services revenue, which is why right. I think that they'll Absolutely. keep this going in some form or another. Okay. Yeah, right. I mean, they get there's 10, only so many things years. you can get people subscribed to, and they didn't buy Comixology. It goes along with music, so right? It goes along with TV. Goes yep. along, so it's just another content stream that people will subscribe to. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we'll talk it's about limited. Apple. And their unlimited funds because uh, their market cap now is $916.2 billion. And a number of people have talked about the fact that they're going to, they may well be soon the first trillion dollar company in trillion history. Trillion with a T? Do, do we want to lay a bet on, 
on when. Well, we've been talking about this for months, right? We thought it'd get there before this. Was it Christopher Mims on Twitter yesterday who said all Apple has to do is put the word blockchain on a press release and they'll be there tomorrow? <laughs> MKBH. It mine, or it can, it can mine Bitcoin. <laughs> MKBHD had the, uh, the tweet of the moment in his tweet. He said, Apple, let me see if I can find it. I'm scrolling now. Apple, Apple's cap, fun fact, Apple's cap is closing in on a trillion dollars. If you had a trillion dollars, you could literally buy every single NFL, NBA, and MLS team, Ford, NASA, and 100,000 Teslas and still have money left over, but you couldn't buy <laughs> Apple. But what's interesting to me about this is 154,000 likes and 38,000 retweets. Obviously, uh, this has captured people's imagination. One so I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess June 1st. June 1st. Why June 1st? Because it's the Friday before WWDC. Oh, <laughs> and we know that now because Apple has announced that WWDC is coming up March. What was it? March June fourth, June fourth through eighth. Yeah, that's good. You can so you apply, can I think, until March twenty second. Is that right? You can register. So can you register that's right very, now? That's very. That's like Game apply. of Thrones artwork it has passed through Johnny Ives' lab and got like just totally white coated. Yeah, it looks it's it's going to be the whitest <laughs> WWDC ever. <laughs> Don't this worry, is, there will be there will be no joy. You can go to apple.com slash it'll be everything WWDC, great. It's all updated. This is uh, Zach Hall's uh, video. Is that from Apple? That's nice. I is, that the, so. is that the W? Let me go to the. Is it what is the Apple WWDC Apple dot com? I believe I think it's Apple dot com slash WWDC. Da -da -dum -dum, da -da -dum -dum, it, it looks like that, doesn't it? Da -da -dum -dum. It's got so for people who are listening, <laughs> it's, it's got the uh, like 3D simple. stuff rising up. Ooh, I love that. Oh, maybe Zach made That's it animated. That would have taken a while. I don't know if he yeah, needs that. So. Where did he find it? Yeah, it's not, it wouldn't be hard to 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 do that. Maybe he did that because it's not animated um, on the Apple page. Unless I'm maybe because I'm using Google Chrome, it won't do that for me. That's probably why. I mean, once you have all the basic assets, it's like a couple keyframes and then you and, and a light. Oh, stop it. You show off. Now. I'm just saying. It's not, it's, it's, there's it's, a more button. There's an app icon. Let's read. The, yeah, let's the read the uh, tea leaves Alex, here. You're not, you're not there... bidding on this job. It's been done. <laughs> what's this, yeah, what's the orb that, thing? Yeah. The orb thing is throwing me. Which is which orb thing? Where? The big circle in the, in the top yeah, left. The floating orb at the top Ooh, left. Ooh, that's augmented reality, baby. Yeah. Is that Siri? Or, sphere, or v, maybe VR. Material design. And the, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the very skeuomorphic yeah. uh, 3D design. I love the teardrop uh, windows. And yeah, this is uh, it's just all of Apple's controls, right? In a kind of yeah. uh, 3D form. But you see, but it's interesting. You look at the uh, above that, Bob, you see a 3D bounding box uh, or a yeah. bounding box for a 3D object. That's Up particularly here. cool. Yeah. Interesting, I think. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, this, this is what we do. We dis dissect every last thing in, in these static <laughs> images. And, it's, and I know it's silly, but it's fun. It's That's fun. all we have. Well, Leo, if you go to um, <laughs> apple.com slash newsroom, they have the announcement up there, and it lists some of the things we're going to see, and including the the OSs. They have Siri Kit, Health Kit, and Home Kit right up front. Ah. One of, the, always... one of the things I think will be interesting for WWDC is whether we see, you know, Apple so far has put out AR kit, but will they put out an AR development platform? Like something like a motion for AR would, revel, you know, ex, you know, explode the usage, you know, if, if people can actually drag and drop something and, and build, build AR solutions. So here they are. Right now uh, it's a bit of a, a lift. Uh, Siri kit, home kit, health kit, gym kit, gym kit. <laughs> gym kit is what lets you tap your Apple Watch against gym equipment, and it automatically syncs oh, your workouts. Oh, that's cool. Music kit, research kit, core ML. That's the machine language stuff, right? Machine learning stuff. Yeah. Not machine language. There is a difference. It's like PDF for machine learning. Yeah. Very cool. An well, AR kit. Yeah. So I guess uh, that means we're gonna have a big keynote on uh, June fourth, and. We, we're still waiting. We talked last week about that March rumor that there would be announcements in March. It's As we get now midway through March, it gets less likely, right? It looks like maybe we should as wait. Soon as, they start, as soon as it started sounding like the iPads wouldn't be ready in time for March, it makes a March event very hard. Like they could still do something like briefings or yeah. like, again, like, they, like yeah. a red version of iPhone or something. But if the iPads are going at WWDC, it doesn't sound like there's much use for a full event in March. All right. Big, big, big advantage to getting it as close to uh, announcing them and being able to take pre-orders as close to April as possible, because that's when a lot of money gets committed for uh, usage at the end of the year. So, 
And it's also weird to announce WWDC before an event. They did it last time because they were actually moving locations, but typically you wouldn't want to overshadow one event with another. So how did Zach call? This actually looks like it's on the Apple page, this video. So maybe they just, maybe they stopped doing that to save, uh, to save bandwidth or something. Maybe it was, if you first got there, it was that way. See, well, it's an autoplay video. Maybe they didn't want to run Otherwise, a file you can of have Google's Alex new ad blocker. Right <laughs> <laughs> Front page ad blocker. <laughs> Let's take Apple a break. Could, I mean, Alex could knock that out right, right now. Yeah, come on, Alex. Can you get that before oh, the no, end of the day? I'm I, I went to the web page. <laughs> He's already Safari putting together a slide deck. Maybe Safari. Maybe I, I need to exactly. do it in Safari. Yeah, I went there in Safari. did it right away. Oh, it's a Safari thing. You just wouldn't understand. It's it on my Chrome. It's working on my Chrome. Oh, well, why is it... Maybe, oh, you know what? I have all these blockers going. It's probably a blocker. Steve Gibson is standing there holding it down, preventing it from enemy. I have so many blockers <laughs> on my... Yeah, it's working on... Uh, I've got it on Firefox. It's running on fine. <laughs> it's just me. Just hey, me. Grand, look at Granddad running Chrome. Woo! <laughs> Maybe if I turn off my ad blocking. I'm sure it would work in, in Opera or Schlepnir. Schlepnir. I need to use Schlepnir. Or Fenris. I, I forget. Got, There's just so many Nor 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 right. Norwegian. So I don't have the animation. I got links open in a, in a, in a, in a terminal. <laughs> it's working in links. I will say, I will say now, that I've, now that I'm watching it on the, on the screen, it's, it's quite nice. <laughs> I know. It I want little, it. Let's see. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna Do it on to, your phone, Leo. Do it on your phone. I'm going to break down and use Microsoft Edge. Oh. <laughs> see, I can't, unfortunately, I'm on. It'll be so happy that you launched it. And well, it's being built nice with service you. workers, Leo. The service workers are down there building each pixel by I'm hand. I'm embarrassed to say I'm using a Windows machine on a Mac break weekly. <laughs> now let's see if it... it oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It works in Edge. Oh, that's hysterical. Just not on my Chrome. It's probably all the ad blockers I've got. Yeah. That's Man, nice. Pretty? That's really pretty. Yeah. It's got a little pop effect to it. Like it, it does a little bit of that stretch and bounce stuff like you've seen yeah. classic animation. Actually, you know what it is? I have, uh, I have autoplay blockers uh, for video on mm. my uh, Chrome because I hate autoplay <laughs> video. And that's obviously what this is. Although for, it's great. for good, not evil. <laughs> it's nice. for surprise and delight, not for, for surprise annoyance and, and delight. Frustration. Now the question is how many other websites are we going to see have this design within the next you know, two or three months? <laughs> Usually, you know, this is, this is how we ended up with the little bubbly, the little shiny bubbles. I know. Apple is very influential. It's for the little people after last they've year. They've done videos on their... Uh, Aqua those. 2018. It's not web objects though, probably, right? What was the Apple? Probably HTML. No, okay. this is that, yeah, that just Apple video. technology. Video tag? All right. Go ahead. Look at the source and we'll get back to you. Actually, maybe I can download the uh, QuickTime movie. That would be, <laughs> that's the way to do it. A lot of people are saying it's working with uh, Chrome, so it's just my Chrome. But I have, CSS my, Transform. I have a lot of stuff. Uh, is it CSS Transform? No, I don't know. I'm just joking. Uh, it's it's a, all made out of ASCII characters and CSS Transform. Could very well be. Could very well be. Our show today brought to you by Molecule. We got a Molecule running in here. Smell how good the air is in here. We got the Molecule for the house some months ago, I think we're six months in, something like that, because Lisa was getting uh, allergies. We live uh, in the country, and we get a lot of pollen and dust and stuff in the house, and she would wake up every morning with a headache, and she didn't know what to do, so we got a molecule. It's the world's first molecular air purifier. It goes way beyond what a HEPA filter will do. HEPA filter is basically 1960s technology. It's antiquated. Uh, and it and it and actually 1940s. Wow, 1940s. And they're really until now there hasn't been much innovation since then. But now Molecule uses something called Pico photoelectrochemical oxidation that goes way beyond what a HEPA filter system could do to capture and eliminate allergens, also mold, bacteria, even little things like viruses and airborne chemicals, volatile organic compounds. Pollutants a thousand times smaller than those a HEPA filter can capture. When we put it in, and the next day, Lisa woke up, no headache, and she hasn't had a headache since. Except for, and this was this was actually a, a kind of good blind test. We were away, and uh, we uh, her nephew was staying in our bedroom and had turned off the molecule. We got home the next morning. She slept in bed in, in our bed the next morning. She woke up with a headache. She said, "What? What? I got a headache again." And we looked, and the molecule had been turned off. It works. It makes it easier to cope with all kinds of allergies and asthma and significantly reduces symptoms. 
One one um, happy molecule customer said for the first time in 15 years she'd been able to breathe through her nose. Funded by the EPA research, extensively tested by real people, and verified by third parties in university laboratories like the University of South Florida's Center for Biological Defense and the University of Minnesota's Particle Calibration Laboratory. We love our molecule. We have it running in the background in silent mode, so it's always cleaning the room. It's beautiful, too. A sleek design, solid aluminum shell. It's kind of the apple of air purifiers. And what I, one thing I love, if you pair, you don't have to, but you can pair it to your phone. They have apps on Android and iOS. If you pair it to your phone, uh, the, the molecule will let your phone know it's, that its filters are, you know, down like to 85 or 90%. And the phone app will order new filters, and they just arrive and say, okay, here, you can put your new filters in. It is really cool. I really like you know, don't need. You don't have to use Wi-Fi. It's not an Internet Things device. You can turn off the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities. It works just fine. It's got a, a controls on the top, beautiful controls, touch controls on the top. But I, do, I use the phone app because I just like that ability to uh, you know, automatically get the filters. In fact, we just got some, and uh, I was ready to put them in, and, and I didn't get around to it that evening. Lisa put them in. It's easy. Look at this. Airborne VOC destruction. Things like paint fumes, uh, hydrocarbons in the air from gasoline and, and other poorly combusted fuels, from 100% to practically nothing, thanks to the molecule. It's an amazing device. We love it. $75 off your first order. We always have a deal for you. All you have to do is go to Molecule.com and enter the promo code MACBREAK. That's Molecule with a K, M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E.com, and the promo code MACBREAK. I talked to the uh, founders and inventors. I was really impressed. Great scientists who really wanted to make something that worked for their families. Let it work for your family. Molecule.com. Use the promo code MACBREAK for $75 off your first order. We, get, we actually, uh, we bought one in our bedroom. We bought one for the studio because we were having problems. They would tar the roof and it would filter right down in here. And uh, then there was the fire, the fires in the Sonoma County. It was really smoky in here for a while. And then we got one for Michael's bedroom too. <laughs> so we, we got molecules all over. We love them. All right. Got, uh, you got your lapel mic on. Now, you're very fancy there, Alex Lindsay. You got a, uh, you know, you're like your Mr. TV show. Ah, uh, you know, it's it, it's a it's a insert studio. It's what it's designed for. So we it's got just, one bet. Been a lot of time tuning it. Was it Alex that bet bet by June that Apple would cross a trillion? Q one. Q one. June one. June one. That's that's Apple's Q three. I think so, yeah. Or Q4, June, July, August. No, Q3. What do you think, uh, anybody? Uh, will it happen soon? Will it happen at all? World's that ninth is... largest company by revenue. It has to happen I, eventually. I can't have creeping up. Yeah. Let's look at the, uh, let's look at the one year. Yeah, see, that's a pretty steady upward growth. It's not, you know, it's not perfect, but if you were to draw a line, you know, March 14th last year was 138 bucks. Now it's at 180 bucks. I think I could see them. Here's the really good one. The five. I mean, it'll year. cross, then it'll go back down, then it'll cross I again. Know. Well, people sell down, off as there. soon as it gets close, right? There's you get these sell offs. There'll and be a rumor. There'll be an event. Yeah, nine hundred sixteen billion dollars. It's that's plenty good. That's just a odometer number, right? We don't care about this. <laughs> yeah. And also, well, yeah, but also this is this isn't a sarcastic question, but what will it mean when it becomes a trillion dollar company and when Nothing. it comes a one point two trillion dollar company and when right. it comes a one point five trillion dollar company? I remember the record. I remember and I think it might even have been while we were doing this show when we were talking to be, about being a two billion dollar company. <laughs> We've right. come a long way, baby. Will they ever sell more than ten million iPhones? Mm -hmm. Right. It's kind of more more well, stuff yeah. like that. Let's talk more about the Eddie Q uh, interview because I'm glad to hear you transcribed it. This was Eddie at South by Southwest and it was a you know, a pretty wide-ranging conversation. So, uh Renee, you've uh, none of us have actually seen it unless you were at South by, but you got a pirated copy of it. Uh, yeah, I got a I haven't transcribed all of it. I listened to all of it, but I only transcribed the part about texture because that was the part I was super interested Here's in. Here's the Apple the other Apple News story. Apple News according to Eddie Q, Apple News users followed an average of four publications a year ago. Now that's up to twenty. That shows yep. people are using it. 
or they're desperate to just advantage. make it work. <laughs> CNN has two video excerpts up now, Leo. They have one about texture and Netflix, and I forget what the second one is about, but they have two about two-minute okay. long videos. Up. Oh, good. Okay. Um, he was asked, uh, so was this a CNN event or just a regular South By event? Or It was it was promoted as CNN, but the, uh, Dylan, um, Dylan Byers, Byers who's who a did CNN interview, host, right? But he does a newsletter. I mean, all the promotion is going in the Pacific, which is his uh, new newsletter. So I couldn't tell if it wasn't televised because it was a newsletter event. So right. It was, it was very... <clears throat> he, uh, he said... It was he was asked, it would have been aired in some form. Byers asked him about the NRA TV app on Apple TV. Q said... It falls in Apple guidelines today, but if it changes while it's in the App Store, it can be removed. We also have pro-gun control apps in our App Store. And, of course, the App Store won't let you buy or sell guns. There was uh, a really, really good quote, he said, when they asked him about the difference between Apple News and Google and Facebook. And uh, I'll read a little bit of it because it was super good. He said, look, it's always hard to sit from the outside and talk about others. I do know that for ourselves, when we got into this, we think you have to have a large platform. There's a lot of responsibility. We've always taken a great deal of responsibility for our platform, starting with iTunes, the music store, the app store, certainly Apple News and podcasts. So uh, he said they had guidelines, but weren't happy with the uh, guidelines. But he said the other part is that nobody is completely free. There is no such thing as free. There's no pornography on any of these sites. People draw a line and you can decide where you want to draw that line. We do think free speech is important, but we don't think white supremacy is free speech. That's important. When asked about the uh, uh, Apple original series deals they'd made, uh, he says we're all in on entertainment, but it's about quality, not quantity. He also said kind of cryptically, there's a technology angle that will be a surprise when we add it to our service. This is. Well, from, I think he was talking about how they were going to surface all of this content, and, he, and, and they're it. thinking of ways. Yeah. We don't know anything about making television, Eddie says. <laughs> yep, <laughs> but we did. We it took two years, but we found the right team to lead the effort. Those are those Sony guys that they uh, hired. About 40 people working in original content at Apple right now. The two to eight minutes of video, because they asked him, uh, he said that Jeffrey Katz, okay. I think it was Jeffrey Katzmer, was working on a two to eight minute video service. And if that was revolutionary, and Eddie responded, that's YouTube. There's nothing new about that. Right. Some, some, some shows, some formats are better to have like 30 minutes or 60 minutes or two hours because you can have rich character development and tell more elaborate stories. And other things are good for smaller two to eight minute intervals, but he doesn't think one is going to kill the other. He says car reviews, it's fine. Not for what we want to yes. do. Yeah, remember that Apple real, Apple rarely comes into the, a market thinking that we're going to kill this existing this competitor's product. It's it's basically well, again, we're not going to beat we are, we have a trillion dollars, but we're not going to beat YouTube at being YouTube because they're doing that extremely well. So we're going to do long form. We're going to bring people into the house there, and we're making money based on we can make money based on thirty minute videos. Whereas with Google, it's more important for people to be consuming lots and lots and lots of content because more more content means more commercial breaks, so to speak. They also said that Apple has the because Apple's not dependent on advertising revenue. He suggested that Facebook and Google are incentivized to give you more of the same all the time because they're desperate to keep your attention because they want you to watch or to be there for as long as possible. Where Apple can do things like show you show you things that you might not have thought that you'd like, things that are serendipitous, and they're not worried about losing you because they're not making revenue off keeping you locked on. Yeah, that that was what that was one quote that really didn't strike home with me because YouTube, for instance, is, is all about trying to figure out what you would like to see next to keep you to keep you uh, tuned in. Not so much we're going to keep loading loading with loading your screen with crap and more crap and more crap. It's uh, YouTube is good and is has its algorithms down good enough to understand that uh, I started watching a lot of car videos a couple of years ago. But within short order, it figured out that, oh, he's not like a big fan of like cars and engines. He likes engineering. He likes shows about people building things and solving problems. And so it does recommend interesting engineering solutions through cars. It will not show me uh, Nür Nürburgring crash videos uh, three mm -hmm. times a day. So I, well, that's I, one I, area I, where I did Recommendation get engines are notoriously bad. Actually, Zeynep Tufiki had a, a very good uh, op-ed piece in the yeah. New York Times on Sunday, which she said really – it's been her experience that YouTube gets more extreme. So if you watch left-wing videos, you're going to end up getting recommendations for conspiratorial podcasts and sh videos about government, secret government agencies and the 911 theories. If you watch right-wing stuff, you're going to get more and more extreme right-wing stuff. And I kind of agree with her that the algorithm seems to... She, this is her quote, have concluded that people are drawn to content that is more extreme than what they started with. 
it certainly is one, is sticky. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly one way to get people to watch more is to kind of ramp it up. And it certainly explains why the content on YouTube is increasingly extreme. You know, you look at people like Logan Paul, they just have to go farther and farther each video. I don't know if there's, but the problem is YouTube doesn't reveal its algorithm, and this can only be an anecdote. Yeah, I think we were, there, there's a, we've been there's talking a great about that. I, I think we've been talking about things about media becoming more and more extreme since reality TV started. Yeah, you I mean, bet. I think that Sensationalism there's, there's is nothing new to, on television. Well, since, you know, start with Morton yeah, Downey Jr. and yeah. Well, since as far since first yellow journalism and yellow journalism far, in the newspapers. You're right. Yeah, and and I think that as far as the algorithms go, I mean, what I'm amazed at, I'm I'm uh, almost never touched by them. Like I go in to look for something, I go watch it, and then I leave. And so it's very rare for me to, I mean, with YouTube TV, I might leave it on a lot because it's just on and then I, it's like a TV in the background. But with YouTube itself, I'm there to find something. Um, my kids, on the other hand, uh, I watch them. They can watch Saturday morning for two or three hours and all they're doing is autoplay. Like they just sit there and they just, it just plays one video after the other and, and they, and they sit there and they, and, and I would interrupt them, but most of it is like how to build stuff and, and educational stuff. Like for some, I walked in on Saturday morning and they were watching breakdowns of how DNA is created and how it separates and its RNA and everything else. And I was like, yeah, they can keep on watching that if they want. So, uh, so they, you know, but they, I'm surprised at how long they can just sit there and they don't ever touch the controller. They just sit there and just let it just kind of drone along. It's on Apple TV. And so it's not, it's probably more difficult for them to find something new anyway. Technology, says Eddie Q, in and of itself is not for good. The people that make technology have to make it for good. Okay. A lot of what he said is very on point. You know, he's an Apple executive. He's not going to wander off the reservation. Uh, he did mention the heart study with the Apple Watch, which we talked about last week. That's pretty cool. Yep. There will be a new medical records feature in iOS 11.3 and new Apple Watch activity rings. Activity rings? Uh, new ring. oh, rings. Rings. Congratulations. Right. Those, those all, like rings, rings are invalid. Finger. No, not that kind of ring. The, uh, you know, the there was circles. a whole product line I was missing. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah the circles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as for Apple Music, he says we have 38 million subscribers, 8 million trial users. So they're creeping up. They're getting uh, bigger and bigger. 38 million is, not, is a significant number at this point. Yep. Uh, I think Spotify's 71 million, right? Mm -hmm. do, do we uh, do you remember the time when the when the record industry said they weren't going to make any money from subscriptions? Because I remember I remember them talking about that. Yes. <laughs> that and, and they just couldn't get their head around the idea that well everyone's going to be subscribing and then you'll make money at it. And and it really is it's a um it's like what I think it's like oh it's well over fifty percent of the re revenue now. Actually, there's a great article in the Daily Dot today on. Hacking Spotify's playlist and actually pay for play. Plugola is back, even though it's against the rules in Spotify. A lot of artists are now finding influencers and paying to get on their playlists. That's a very effective way. Remember, Alex, you worked as a music director, how they would come to you and say, if you were to play our record in high rotation, <laughs> it could be worth your while. Uh, this was called you know, Plugola, and it was a big problem. It's it's illegal, and it was a big problem in the music, in the radio industry. I think maybe Spotify's got a Plugola problem. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that what 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 they really need to do is figure out a way that that the uh, folks making the playlists were it, were it would be able to make some money on it. I mean, I think that they should be getting remunerated for the influence that they're providing. So when you don't do that, you're creating an environment for that to to happen. So you know, them getting some small percentage. I mean, if, if they have a hundred thousand people downloading, you know, and people are watching or, or, or x number of downloads, they should be getting some kind of money because they're providing the service that the record company would otherwise, which the record company is obviously willing and the artists are willing to pay for. <laughs> well, here's, here's the quote from the Daily Dot. The black market for Spotify playlists is booming. It's cheaper than you might expect to hack the system. And if it's done right, it more than pays for itself. So uh, I know we've always said that artists don't get much money from streaming, but they're getting enough to, to where they're starting to cheat it. Yeah, yeah, and I think that um, you know, rather than there's there's a couple things that Spotify could do um, that would, you know, allowing people to build basically build radio shows that were that incorporated the music where they're not actually streaming them, they're just simply being able to talk between them and then play, um, and and do that those kinds cool. of things and allowing yeah. them to do advertising <laughs> that and they could run their own ads, you know, uh, you know, on the on their uh, on their show. 
you know, on 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 Spotify, um, would definitely, you know, basically be the end of radio. I mean, I mean that would be like if, if you were able to actually do a show, you know, where it's your it's more than your playlist. You're able to talk in between and have a bunch of things. You know, it it would there be well, yeah. Why would you listen to radio at that point? Yeah. Well, that's, that's part of the problem. Just just as we're starting to see TV shows trending more towards nostalgia, we're seeing movies that got can- uh, TV shows that got canceled in the '90s being revived because it's the people who were kids who grew up on those shows who are still watching television, whereas people who <laughs> people, they're people who didn't who did not grow up in the habit of turning on the TV and just letting things play. So that's gonna that's gonna change radio. That's, that's we're already seeing why I think it already uh, happened. Conserv- <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I was gonna say that that's why that's why conservative talk radio really really took uh, took off because again it's mostly old people who are listening right. to radio and people who are very susceptible to the the world out there is scary you don't understand it and it's full of danger that you can't combat please buy our vitamin supplements here's the example rap caviar this is a playlist on spotify that has eight million followers yeah. 60 songs so if you get on this playlist that's huge. You're gonna yeah. people are gonna hear your so song. So is it is it one playlist that they're just constantly refining? Is yeah, they're, or they're constantly. Yeah, changing? so it's like a it's exactly what you were talking about. It's like a radio station. It doesn't have a DJ, but if you follow mm-hmm. this playlist, it's updated all the time. And if you could get on this playlist somehow, that would be really good. Eight million people would be likely to hear your song. You'd get eight million streams. That pays for itself. Yeah. It's hard. We we got to find a, a balance point for it. It's it's uh, Instagram. I think shows the way of. Uh, you have people who started out creating Instagram feeds based on their interests, based on fun. They wake up one morning and find out they have half a million subscribers. Uh, and if someone offers you five thousand dollars to mention a product, of course you're going to take it because. Most of us come from immigrant parents and grandparents who would rise from their graves and kill us if they, if we could make five thousand dollars as much money as they spent in their first homes by doing exactly eighteen seconds worth of work. And the other end of that is that remember that if they're if if you created a Spotify playlist that's a hundred that a million people are interested in, you are working for Spotify. You're just not getting paid for it. So there has to be a way of get of. Uh, when pe- when your hobby becomes profitable for other people, you need to be uh, have your thumb in the till. Alex, you remember? No, you just need to be able to. Alex, able you to remember the Loop in Chicago, one of the great classic rock stations of all time. My yep. fr- my friend Steve Dahl. Hey, Steve Dahl show. Steve his Dahl last Hello. show. Hello. Ready, on the Loop. Really? Hey there. The Loop Let's is shutting down and going here, Christian like a, rock. Caught <laughs> having sex with a porn um, star or something. Mm-hmm. This our is uh, this is uh, this is what's happening. Radio stations are struggling. Uh, the the radio company I work for, Clear Channel, they do my they syndicate my uh, Tech Guy show, uh, Chapter Eleven, uh, Cumulus, which owned the Loop, uh, struggling. I think they also uh, declared bankruptcy. Not, not well, I and you got to blame. I mean, you got to think, think that it's digital. It's Spotify. It's uh, it's other ways to get music, right? I hope it's podcasts too. Well, I, and I think that I think that. Uh, that is definitely radio is definitely on its <laughs> on its last leg. I don't think that there's any that's streaming. There, right? There's I, yeah, I mean, I, but I think that the people. I, I still think what, what what radio leaves when it when radio goes away, which it's going to do, um, as it as it, my, my my parents don't even listen to radio anymore. You know, so uh, the when as it goes away, I think the vo- the void that's still left that isn't being solved by Spotify or Apple Music is still contextual information. You know, so how do I like for instance, a, a good example is even NPR. I listen to NPR every day. Uh, I never listen to it on the radio ever because I wouldn't. I would never want to listen to it in the order that they gave it to me. And you know, I, 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 I'm on the NPR app and I get Morning Edition and I you get listen my, to talk. Whatever I missed. Yeah, talk has survived. Well, no, where although I think but, podcasting is is assaulting talk but, as well. What I was going to say is that I and then I reorder all the shows and then I listen to it. But I still want to listen to what people have to say. I think that. That's what but I think that there are. There are Absolutely. But I think that there are people who want to listen to music and understand, like, if, if there were shows that had, uh, you know, interviews with some of the artists and, and so on and so forth, I think some of the people who are really big fans would really like that. Um, there's just no good, easy way to do that inside of these platforms. And I think that's a that's something that radio hasn't done for a long time. I mean, ever since they went to programmed uh, music, you, you almost never get actual interviews with the bands anyway. I mean, the, the, you have a, a handful of 
holdovers like KBCO and Boulder that still has, you know, Studio C and still has, you know, a lot of those things. And I think that's what makes them relevant. Um, I think that if they're if you're not doing something different, if you're just doing if you're just doing programmed radio, why would I listen to that? You know, like that, like Pandora does that. So if you're just doing, you know, and it does it better for me than than a radio station, um, you have to figure out how that radio station is going to provide something that's distinct. Or Spotify, to close the loop, has to figure out how to reproduce those last little vestiges. That doesn't wouldn't be hard for them to do, and wouldn't take away from their business. It probably just add another couple million listeners. According to WLUP.com, the loop lives on on digital. I mean, if you're going to do a radio station, why have a tower anyway, right? Yeah. Well, the hardest really, part is all the is the, the the licensing for the music is the hardest part of why people don't go online. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is it does not the the math that they created doesn't make any sense. That's why we don't have radio stations that are um, radio. If you're an existing radio station and you're streaming, your licensing is completely different than if you're streaming only. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let me take a break, and we'll have uh, more in just a second. Lots more stories. AirPods 2, perhaps. Um, new entry-level Mac notebook, perhaps. I love all these rumors. Um, a new Apple keyboard that can't be defeated by crumbs, perhaps. That will be welcome. That's a patent. That's I mean, the patent. iPad Pro keyboard is like that already. Yeah. It's, it's a patent behind they need to implement soon. Dress. I hear so many people <laughs> losing their 2016... MacBooks, uh, because you know they're very fragile compared with something. Well, so around. that that's the hilarious thing is that that keyboard was designed to prevent ingress from particles, but the problem is that they still get in and now they can't get out. Egress, <laughs> yes, <laughs> not good for egress as, either. As far as I'm concerned, that's like taking a dog that pees all over the house and saying, "Good news, we trained it not to drink out of the toilet." Okay, it's an improvement. <laughs> He's still going to the pound tomorrow, but okay. <laughs> uh, show today brought to you by FreshBooks, the cloud accounting system for freelancers who want to spend more time doing what they love and less time creating invoices, tracking expenses, pestering slow pays. FreshBooks is awesome. Tax season's coming. And I bet you, as we get closer to tax season, a few of you are saying, I wish I'd started using FreshBooks last year. Now's the time. Start using it this year for next year's tax season. FreshBooks gives you all the information your your bookkeeper, your tax preparer, or you, if you're doing it yourself, needs to do your taxes. But more than that, every day of the year, you'll know, have I made money? Who owes me money? How much money's come in? It's a great dashboard. It starts by making professional-looking invoices. That's how I started using FreshBooks. Uh, it, it solved my, my, my invoice phobia. I was able to get them out in time. And by the way, here's something interesting. You get paid faster if you if you send invoices. Save time accepting credit cards online with FreshBooks. And those online credit card payments, which, by the way, you get immediately as soon as you sign up for FreshBooks, mean your client is more act, act, uh, likely to pay quickly. On average, according to FreshBooks, twice as fast. Plus, you don't have to go to the bank with the checks. You don't have to chase clients for payments. You'll always know which invoices have been sent which have been paid, which haven't been paid, which have been viewed and not paid. It's easy to send out gentle and increasingly um, annoying <laughs> notices. You owe me money. Send me money. But you're not going to need to because people pay faster with FreshBooks. It's a lot easier for them, and it's a lot easier for you. FreshBooks always adds new features, too. But, but it started with the invoices. But, of course, in the process of doing invoices, then you're doing expenses in their TNA or just the expenses – by by uh, by clicking you know a picture uh, in your app uh, FreshBooks app on your uh, iPhone or Android phone, and then it goes into the FreshBooks invoice. But you also that's capturing expenses, right? So now you know income, you know expenses. You can do you know how much money you've made. You have a dashboard that really has all the information you need, including all the reports you'll need for tax time and accountants whenever you need them. FreshBooks makes it easy to, to, to build for time and hours. Uh, you could do it by client or even by project and have different prices for different projects with the same client. There's multilingual, multi-currency support. They just added Spanish and uh, Dutch languages. Uh, and they have all the currencies in there. That's one of the reasons I used it. I was billing them in Canada. It made it a lot easier to bill them in Canadian dollars. Uh, payment schedules can be set up from the FreshBooks iOS app. So you can see, and you can now see attachments if you've made proposals on existing proposals. They've got a, a very rich array of push notifications on iOS. So you can be, for instance, notified when a client hasn't viewed the invoice. Hey, you know, you sent that invoice last week. Nobody's looked at it. 
Um, when a client comments, when an invoice is overdue, lots more. Set yourself up for a stress-free tax season next year with FreshBooks. You've been meaning to do it. Now's the time to do it, so you'll be ready for next April. From payment reminders to late fees, automate as much or as little as you'd like to and get back to doing what you love at FreshBooks. Try it free for 30 days. FreshBooks.com slash MacBreak. FreshBooks.com slash MacBreak. Make sure you tell them, I heard it on FreshBooks. I mean, I heard it on MacBreak. If you say I heard it on FreshBooks, it's not going to do any good. Say, I heard it on MacBreak when they ask you, how did you hear about us? FreshBooks.com slash MacBreak. 30 days free. We thank them so much for their support of MacBreak Weekly. Uh, so you so that patent isn't uh, manna from heaven when it comes to uh, the, uh, the cr crummy keyboards on the new Mac notebooks. That's just a patent, not a fix. I don't think anyone wants crumbless keyboards higher on their list. They just want the old keyboards. Just, just, just make it easy to fix. Yeah, yeah. yeah a, new key, a new keyboard would be great. Uh, we're still seeing rumors. Uh, here's a new one from Mac Rumors. New entry-level Mac notebook expected to adopt Retina display. Likely launch at WWDC in June. Oh, I hope. I hope. This is from Digitimes, which is, I don't know, what about 50-50? I don't know how accurate Digitimes is. But they say a new 13.3-inch entry-level MacBook. We're on the second MacBook, but they haven't really changed it much, have they? I, I'd love to see another No, port. I mean, and I think, I think the wish was that this would, that the MacBook 12-inch would fall down to the, the $999 price point and replace the MacBook Air the way the MacBook Air replaced the previous white uh, MacBook, but that just never happened. It remained yeah. an expensive product to make, and the Intel Core M processor remained suboptimal for a lot of tasks that you want in a general-purpose computer, and so the Air stayed because it had better, it had a real core i i5 or i7 processor had a bunch of ports had a lot of things that people find useful at that price point and it had that price point and i think apple's realized that they painted themselves into a macbook corner the way they painted themselves into a mac pro corner um and a, and a modernized uh, air is probably a better product at that price range so yeah i'm not clear if this is an error or a macbook they're saying macbook uh it is a 13.3 inch panel uh, which and it's the same resolution. And now they would probably know this because they're in the supply chain business, right? Digit Times. So a 13.3 inch ASI panel, same size and resolution as the MacBook Pro 2560 by 1600 from LG. It says LG will begin supplying the panel in April. So uh, Digit Times, I think, is now proje then projecting mass production end of May or beginning of June. I'm not. It's not clear. Is that for a, a refreshed MacBook Air? I mean, when you look at the KGI rumors, and you look at Mark Gurman's rumors, and you look at the stuff that Ben Beharin spoke about, it all makes sense. Apple needs something at the 899 price right. point to sort of compete with the the the, the, the growing Windows uh, entry level computers there. And there's they don't have anything but an outdated MacBook Air and an expensive MacBook, and they need something in the middle and a linear uh, a, a linear a linear successor to the MacBook Air with a Retina display and modern specs is their best bet. Right. You know, the question is, are they going to keep the MacBook Air name? Uh, because it's, as Renee says, it's a, it's an uh, it's a weird problem that they have that if they're if they're really going to do an entry level MacBook, if they want, and if they're trying to compete with Windows machines, they have to offer a hell of a lot more than the MacBook Nothing, uh, which is a which is an ex one of my favorite Mac products ever. But if you if you're if you're anticipating that someone is going to be walking into Best Buy or someone is uh, with a uh, 600 to 900 dollars to spend on a laptop you show them the current macbook nothing you show them what you can get in on the windows side same basically the same sort of usage you get so much more on the windows side people you don't have to travel with dongles and uh, yes it's thicker but uh, but not so much thicker that it's gonna you're gonna have to throw away uh, one of the magazines you're not reading in the in your backpack anymore. <laughs> so, the, so the so the question is: Are they going to try to create a more? Uh, are they, they going to try to create a MacBook Nothing that uh, is cheaper to manufacture, or are they going to go, for instance, the way of uh, one of the original like white MacBooks, where they they bite the bullet, say we're going to have to have a plastic case, we're going to have to make it thicker than the MacBook Pro because we can't afford to make we we can't afford what it would cost us to manufacture something as thin as an iPad at this scale, and we also also need to have a couple of for real USB uh, uh, Type A ports on there, so it's uh, it, it will give us a lot of insight into what Apple's worried about. If they decide to make something that is a less a more affordable MacBook, nothing that means they're saying we get it. We're not we, we just can't do what uh, the Windows manufacturers are doing. 
based on their lower overheads, based on their need to keep uh, re revolutionizing their line year after year after year. Or they're going to say, no, we do want to get that high school student. We do want to get that college student. We do want to get that company that's buying things in bulk for uh, for all of their uh, for in 100, 100 copies for each of their employees. I don't know how they would do it. I remember when they announced the new MacBook Pro, they positioned the entry level version one without a touch bar is for everyone who wanted a MacBook Air with Retina. But that, you know, that really that's twelve that's twelve ninety nine, I think, point of entry. And the MacBook, I think, was originally going to be the MacBook Stealth and wasn't meant to be an entry level machine. It was meant to be again that executive sort of I want the ultra lightest MacBook possible, and nothing is fulfilling that entry level um, product slot for them. Yeah, the Not Retina. Modern, I think the Retina resolution would be really important if it if it's possible. <laughs> there's a lot of apps that I literally can't run on some of the smaller. <laughs> you know, it's it, there's just not enough yeah. resolution. So being able to have it's, more resolution on the screen, even if it'd be hard to read, would be useful. You you can buy non-Retina displays that don't have the col the, the the quality and the calibration that they that color calibration that Apple would need or the brightness they would need. So that we're, we're there are still plans for making super super cheap non-Retina type displays. If you're making a kind of display that needs to go into a MacBook, then you're really still talking about one of the pricier displays on the on the market. So it would be it would be hard for them to even do something like a MacBook Air right now, I think. I'm getting a, a Windows laptop. I should probably say that it's 12 inches. I'm just mm -hmm. checking the. This is the the new. Is, HP is it the one with on the camera arm. and the key? Leo, you know, the one with those. <laughs> that was funny, wasn't it? This is 1920 huh. by well, 1280 on a 12 inch laptop pound and a half tablet with you know attachable keyboard windows style um that uh, this is three by two which is kind of interesting yeah so um i don't know i'll it's, i'll it's, show, it's i have hard. that next yeah. week i'll show you what you just it's it's hard to you, you, when you look at hp's product line especially when you look at lenovo's product line that's what they're up against when they're trying yeah. to deal with a thousand bucks or less we're not talking about uh yeah, we're not talking about bucks. Bucks. yeah, yeah we're, we're talking about really good machines i, I think that uh, I don't think that a ThinkPad would cause people who are happy with a MacBook to switch uh, or even people who have complaints about the MacBook to switch. But I think it's useful to walk into a store and check out a ThinkPad because these things are they're uh, they're they're really like the, the Crown Vic. Uh, what the Crown Vic is to cars, I meaning they're not necessarily stealthy or elegant, but damn, do they perform and damn, are they handy to have I'd around. And you, it, it'd be so nice to see some of these models and maybe it's just Alex's thought that Apple should just allow Mac OS to be sold on other platforms because I don't expect Apple to make 1500 different SKUs mm -hmm. you know this is not in there they're I not going to ever make anything that looks like this but it's a touch screen if it just weren't running Windows yeah, it would, exactly. it would right. be so great right. no, I, there's so many I mean uh, there's so many things that I would love to see Apple I mean I love there, there's so many PCs that we have in the office that are much more powerful than I mean I haven't tested the, the iMac Pro yet but the the some of the PCs that we have have four graphics cards in them, and they oh, have, yeah. uh, you know, an incredible, you know, the the thread, the AMD Threadrippers, you know, are pretty fast um, CPUs, and, and and all of those things are things that you really uh, that you really want to see. You want to have that hardware, and then you just want to have it on a Mac Mac OS. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I, I do think that Apple is going to hang on to it until they've decided that the portable platform at least is going to support. Mostly iOS. I mean, and I, I think that the two operating systems are slowly merging. Yeah. Um, you know, the real question is whether they can without um, exposing anything. Yeah. There's some I'm, point I'm where still... Mac OS is not going to be valuable to Apple. You know, I don't know yeah, exactly I, when that is. I, I again, I, I still, I, I'm still yearning to see visible uh, all in. Uh, an all-in sign that Apple is is as much in love with Mac OS as they are with what they're doing with iOS. Uh, and as I've said before, but I haven't said it in a couple of months, so I'll say it again. Uh, it's I'm taking really good care of my 2015 MacBook Pro because when it dies, when I finally spill, <laughs> when I spill Dr. Pepper into the keyboard of this one, uh, if Apple has not revel t taken a real major turn away from the direction they're heading with the MacBooks, I will not buy another MacBook. It will be definitely a ThinkPad. There's no way that I'm going to buy a, a current Mac Pro. MacBook Pro, just because and what Andy means everybody is deleting the deleting the bezels and adding a notch, right? Just because everybody in the Mac space probably isn't aware of what's going on in the Windows space. This is the thousand dollar HP Spectre, uh, i5, eight gigs of RAM. It's got a touch screen. This is a thousand bucks. It's thirteen yeah. inches. Um, this is this is kind of what that MacBook 
that thousand dollar MacBook would be competing against. Yeah, and the great thing is you don't get crumbs in that. Not only is it a better keyboard, you don't get crumbs in it because if you're watching like YouTube and Netflix, you, you actually it. just fold the <laughs> yeah. you fold the screen back so yeah. that the the keyboard is facing away from your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I then you mean, put it on, on the table that's covered in popcorn. And stuff. Well, yeah. don't do that. Yeah, that's what. Well, yeah, I mean. if, Apple, if, there, if there's one thing that I would love for them to steal, Apple to steal, it's not even necessarily um, a touchscreen. It is a hundred eight. It is a. It is that uh, three sixty degree hinge because the number when I'm testing out a Windows laptop, the number of times that I find myself again turning it all the way around and turning it into like a not even I'm not even there to touch the screen. I just want to be able to read stuff while. I'm like having lunch or even I want to I, I'm traveling and I have to crank out like 5,000 words a day for for three or four days while I'm traveling and I really want to do it on something better than a notebook keyboard so I will travel with a really good keyboard it's it adds so much nice stuff to the experience of using a computer I would love to see I, 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 that I think I think we'll more likely get the, the iPad version of the okay. clamshell first um, they'll just they'll mm -hmm. just scale iOS to be a MacBook device and it's a detachable keyboard. Or maybe it'll have a detachable keyboard, but it'll be much, much more MacBook-like. And that solves the problem of touchscreen. It solves the problem of LTE modems. It just solves a lot of the issues that people currently have with MacBooks, although, you know, with a different, different operating. So everything that Apple announced last fall has shipped except for one thing. Can anybody tell me what that one thing is? We got the HomePod finally, right? Two things. Two things? Yep. I yeah. I can only think uh, of one. iCloud, iCloud Message Sync and uh, AirPlay 2. Oh, those the, char the char charging charging pads. Three things. The, oh, the three, three things, things Apple macros. announced in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> three. Th okay. It, Anybody else? Anybody know a four? <laughs> Anybody four? The AirPods. The AirPods <laughs> charging case. AirPod charging case that goes <laughs> with this, which rumor says. Oh, right. <laughs> rumor says the digital. This is Digitimes again. We'll see this month. The finally the uh, the charging pad, and of course. The picture Apple showed has an iPhone and an Apple Watch charging along with your AirPods, but you can't charge AirPods unless you get a new case that supports wireless charging. So I am. This is this is like one of the few Apple products I can tell you that I am z I have zero interest in. Like like <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen very often. It, it, yeah, I'm usually like just send me like if Apple just had a subscription service that I just send them a check when they have a new product. They've and, done that, and I, I get it. Yeah. You, you, you know, it would it would probably be fine. <laughs> But but uh, um, not but this one, huh? The the not this one because here's the deal is that I, I want to know that it's really going to charge. I mean I don't know how many times your watch has been like you put your watch. I have one in my car and 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 what happens is is it pops off just a little bit because of that mag you know and 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 I'm afraid that that would happen all the time and and I I want to have I wish I had a lightning in my in my watch you know like I don't I don't like the whole magnet thing you know the only place I like the magnet is the mag is the mag uh, safe which they took away. Not that I'm bitter. <laughs> You, do you you don't do wireless charging on your uh, iPhone? Never, never. I do every when night. I plug it in. I want to plug it in. I want to know it's there. I just want to. I want to hear the little. I want to hear the little. I won't even use a charger <laughs> cable that doesn't make a little click when you put it in. Really? I want to know I that. Use I'm it for con like, I, the best way to charge your iPhone is still to use uh, like the slow adapter and to do it with a plug because that does the least cycles and maintains battery health the longest. Uh, the conve like fast charging and wireless charging are conveniences. Like if you have a fast charger and you need your phone topped up quickly, or you just have it in the kitchen or your desk and you want to charge it quickly for a few minutes, but both of those take lifespan off your battery. I don't think most humans should ever have to care about that. But if you're someone who likes to micro manage your charge cycles you still want to go with slow and wired i don't like charge pads that are flat like this because i do find that that is a little bit more difficult to be sure that you're charging on them um, as you know i use an easel charger which works perfectly as long as it's on the easel anywhere on the easel it's always charging and that's what i use at night but um, i imagine there'll be people who i mean there is a convenience to having all three things charge uh, you know maybe for travel this would be the right thing you know? <laughs> yeah. Also, also I, I, Apple's done a, a. It looks like they've done a really good job on the interface for this. There's not uh, on my on my old Samsung phone. The last time I was using a, a wireless charger on my nightstand every single day, there is like a little dot, little LED that sort of comes on that that uh, re reaffirms that yes, I'm charging right now. Whereas Apple is the app, uh, the iPhone is actually going to take over your screen for a second with a cool little animation that's impossible to skip to show you that. To, to overlook that yes you've made it made it correct I, I do think that the best way to do this though is not like one expensive super duper charger but I think the real power wireless charging comes when you have affordable chargers that are kind of everywhere like right now I'm at the desk that I podcast from 
again, back when I uh, my daily carry phone was had wireless charging, there'd just be like a fifteen dollar uh, eBay wireless charger right here. So when I put it down, it, it's charging. There used to be one uh, on the little stand that I have my drink on when I'm watching TV. It just happens to go down there. Not that I'm it's not, I'm it's not even an explicit thing. I'm just simply setting it down where the phone belongs, and as a result, I'm not grabbing my phone to go out at night and realize that, oh, that's right, 8% phone. Yeah, too bad. So I don't see the, uh, it's called the Air Power. Is that what that pad is? I don't see it on the uh, Apple site. <laughs> but they did show don't, it right at that event. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that they, uh, I, yeah, I'll take a look at it if it comes out. I agree with you, Andy. It's probably going to be, did they say what the price would be? It'd probably be, you know, Apple price, which is... It's going to be expensive. I've heard yeah, it's going to be expensive. 50. Yeah, yeah. yeah. something like... I, so I I've heard some more. The, I'm with you. I have chargers everywhere. In fact, it reminds me, I'm going to get some more of I these. mean, it, it, it'll be a cool thing to have on your nightstand when you buy one of them in the... Right. Uh, it's, for travel it's, it's hard is, to, I think, what I would use it for. Or, or for travel, but yeah. really, it's, it's hard to overstate how uh, flexible people are when it comes to... This is the first thing... First, this is the first piece of technology I'm going to interact with over the course of the day. And it's the last piece of technology i'm going to interact with over the course of the day when you get to that sort of thing where no this isn't necessarily a productivity thing this isn't necessarily a feature thing this is part of my lifestyle this is part of my daily routine this is why people are willing to spend silly amounts of money on a really good shower head because it's one of those little things that gives you a small amount of reassurance that okay everything is okay <laughs> i got i got my dental floss dispenser i got my charger i've got everything is okay so yeah it's it's not a big deal to me so long as for that price it really has to work great like alex says the first time that you know, the, the first time that you bump the nightstand and you happen to jostle your watch a little bit off center and it stops charging and you're screwed the next day that's when people are saying okay i've got eight hours left in my two-week return turn plan i'm returning this thing right now yeah i feel like for a hundred bucks i could get three of these uh, tilt view wireless chargers <laughs> uh and then and do what you do annie put one in the office yeah. put one at work i have one at work I I think I actually had that one. Yeah, yeah. it's a it, the, the thing promise. is this is easy because you never uh, you know it's on there. And by the yeah. way, doesn't your iPhone go blunk when it when it's, it's yeah. yeah? And there's a, yeah. a green light at the bottom that lights up. But there's really less. I don't I don't find that I'm you know waking up in the morning and oh shucks it didn't charge. I used to uh, in winter time. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'll, just quickly, in winter time, when I had the again, when I had my wireless charger, that was a problem because I'd have like a really thick comforter, and sometimes I'd roll over at night, and the edge of that thick comforter would just just brush up against the edge of the table just enough to disrupt a cable or something. Yeah, that's and the again, worst. knock it off just a little yeah. bit. So yeah. yeah, you really don't. That want happened that. to my Palm Pre and my Nexus Four so always. <laughs> <laughs> I just wake up and it was in charge. You're, but the, I think the promise of this technology is that I mean, one day the big dream is that it'll be in every restaurant and every coffee shop in every taxi or, or, yeah. or car sharing service. It'll just be everywhere you go. So if your phone is low, like in the car, you'll put it down. In the restaurant, you'll put it down. At the table, at the office, Someday. you're having a meeting, you'll put it yeah. down and it'll just charge. Yeah, yeah. your dream. Because the, there, there are some sites that will let the, there, there's some sites that have convenience chargers where you know there's that little hydro sometimes actually when you when I even take an uber or a lip or a lift there'll be like a little snake out there that says oh here's a USB C here's a micro USB here's a you lightning can't charger trust them. I but mean there's such exactly. a security vulnerability yeah not not just a security vulnerability but I don't know where they ordered this from and if they've got some Chinese charger that is not like what not not Apple MiFi uh, certified uh, it's yeah, again, I would never, yeah. there's a security problem, there's a safety problem, but when you have wireless charging, so long as you don't have Bluetooth turned on on an Android phone and lots of permissions that you shouldn't have turned on, I would absolutely trust that at Starbucks. Yeah, yeah I, I have to admit, I, I never plug anything into, like at an airport, I always see people plug like into that little USB charger, I'm like, that is crazy talk. Like, you know, you are just, <laughs> you know, I won't even, I, even in our own the car we own, we, I won't plug it in, you know, it's just, yeah. it's kind of like, you know, I, I want to know what, what is actually interfacing and I want it to be dumb. <laughs> I actually, I actually, I actually had to like pay for. I, I was using, I was uh, renting a zip car. Uh, one, one of the first or second times I rented a zip car, I was using. I said, "Oh, great, Bluetooth. I'll just use the, I'll use the, the speakers." And unfortunately, this Ford had the thing. Oh, automatically. Don't worry, we can dial your phone through your contacts. And I actually wound up returning the car late because I was sitting there trying to figure out how to completely like factory reset <laughs> the factory installed radio to make sure it wasn't getting all of my contacts handed over to the next person who uses this damn thing. So the yeah. MiFi logo has been uh, updated. These are the made made for not MiFi, MiFi made for iPhone. The new logo. I didn't know the old logo. No. MFI. 
MFI. Is that how we say it? MFI. Yeah. Uh, and for the first time ever, I didn't know this wasn't a possibility. You can now buy a, he a lightning to headphone jack, or what is that? Light Male. But the stereo stereo headphone mail jack, right? Oh, so, so basically, that's so, so basically you can put, you can put, put it you can in plug your, line your phone, in. right? Exactly. So you can ah. you can route the out the output of your phone, the audio output of your phone to another device, which is beautiful for like capturing voicemails. Oh, that's for, really good news for, for using or for using it as an audio source in an arbitrary device. Yeah, I have lots of lots of uh, devices that I would like to. Uh, that have line in that I would like to which is into. which is weird because I can't I remember like somebody I think he worked for Apple making a big statement about how nobody uses audio cables anymore and they're pointless and we don't need audio cables anymore <laughs> who was that mm, I think it's some some crazy person rushed the stage at an Apple event and went over okay I'm, sorry. I'm still Hold mad on. that uh, Sonos stopped offering its uh its 30 pin uh oh. with was the dock <laughs> remember I used to dock yeah. my and then they got rid of that, and uh, they never did a lightning cable one. I guess you just do it all supposed to be wireless, right? The modern world. Uh, and is Apple, is Apple uh, allowing both male and female, or is it just, just the male out for the cables? Well, they've, they may, the female, they sell. That's the, uh, that's the, that's the headphone They adapter. sell that, but can other people make, uh, oh, make them I don't know. themselves? I think for the right price. Yeah, they've been doing it for a while because they made the splitters where you could split from lightning uh, to 3.5 and back. Uh, yeah, in recent times, they, they've 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 done a lot of uh, they've they've uh, the, they've expanded the MFI program so that uh, excuse me, and made for Apple program so that you can do a lot more with USB C than you could before. You can do a lot more with the Lightning Jack that used to be proprietary, and it's just typical typical Apple of being conservative about what they're going to let third parties do until they've really got the hardware locked down. And they really know that it's not going to result in <laughs> something being set on fire. Which is, sounds like I'm making a joke, but every time that you get one of these like rabid news items about how someone wants to sue Apple because something blew up, it turns out to be some cheap, no-name Chinese charger or something that came in a box or something they bought at a. They, 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 one of the biggest dangers in my in my box of cables are the times where I didn't I needed a charging cable, didn't have one, I was desperate, so I was at CVS where they have that little bin of no-name chargers, and unfortunately, it, it sort of enters the scrum. I don't I have forgotten that this is a crap piece of junk five dollar cable and not an actual fifteen dollar one whether you buy it from apple or from somebody else you really the, the one th you never 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 want to save money on a charger or on a cable never this is something that will warm the cockles of christina warren's heart she's a big bob burgers fan bob's burgers fan <laughs> yes sir the creator of bob's burgers has made a deal with apple for an animated musical called central park It'll be Apple's first animated series, its first musical, and they placed an order for not one but two seasons. Two, 26, two seasons. Twenty-six episodes. Central Park is a story, according to a variety of a family of caretakers who live and work in Central Park, and end up saving the park and basically the world. Josh Gad and uh, co-writer Nora Smith also worked on the series with Lauren Bouchard, who is the yeah. This That's, is this is going to be good. This is going to be really good. Not, not only because Bob's Burgers is intensely funny, but every uh, for really no reason that they're required to do so. Almost every episode over the end credits, they have a they have an original song that they will just simply write for that lasts for thirty seconds over the over the credits. A new animation for it. They've done a few different episodes where uh, <laughs> uh, the, look look for an episode named Topsy. Where uh, uh, where the where Gene the the son writes an entire musical based on Thomas Edison electrocuting an elephant, and you're like, my God, that is a that is a super catchy, wonderful song. So the idea of that whoever it was who really who was who said yes, I hope that they said yes the fastest way they could possibly do it. And I gotta say, this is the first. It, this is how these uh, streaming exclusives work. It's not that people you know look back and. Open the brochure and say, mm, that, "That's a really char that's a really engaging portfolio of content." It's that oh, the Bob's Burgers guy is doing a musical series. Oh, I might have to subscribe okay. to that music. If that, that weren't enough, are you ready to hear who the voice uh, talent is in this? It's more. O M G, uh, yep. Leslie Odom Jr. from of of Hamilton fame, David Diggs, who was Thomas Jefferson on Hamilton, <laughs> Titus Burgess, who plays the fabulous. Titus uh, on um, the uh, unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. He is wonderful. Kristen Bell, 
who is fabulous from the the good what is it the good earth the good parts the good the good place Stanley Tucci man yeah. can't wait to see this amazing voices I, it's, it's great, great people and you'll recognize every really, one of them and you may not know the name but you'll go oh oh who is that yeah yeah I can't exactly. wait well, I, I think I think more than anyone else I think Apple is really just they are after a, a, a false start, they are. Uh, I think that they, they really are the just deals? looking for tent yeah. poles only. Yeah, you know, like now, this will really be made like by 20th Century Fox poles. Television, who and I guess Bouchard is under uh, contract with them. Yeah. So w the real question that comes up, and we've been every week we've had a new announcement like this. The real question that comes up is where can we see this though? What's this going to be? <laughs> Well, I think I think we're going to find out in five years. Remember, the, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not even yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm not even joking. I mean that I I really think that all of this is really going to come together when it, it's it might even it might be an Apple Watch sort of migration where they know what they have to do next, but they don't know where they're going to end up. But once they figure it out, they're going to have everything in place for to make that thing work. Uh, I'm I, I I know that uh, unfortunately uh, podcasts are recorded and saved uh, on on servers everywhere. So I know that I was kind of negative uh, a year ago or two years ago about Apple becoming a content company, but they've been making a lot of really cool moves. And if you look at them as saying, "Hey, we've got Apple Apple Music, and we've got three crappy shows, one that you're kind of interested in, and one that you really want," that doesn't sound impressive. But they're making all of these moves that are intended so that in five years' time they could be like uh, like a Hulu. Uh, they not, they can't be a Netflix and they wouldn't want to because there's already Netflix. But in terms of having a really good stable of shows that uh, have enough high profile people, uh, not like uh, some of the Netflix movies where they just threw some money at a famous name who decided to take a script that they rejected four years ago and make it on the cheap. But essentially saying, I will let you have your uh, all the meetings that you've had where with uh, with network executives in which they <laughs> have been nothing but giving you trouble and giving you financial trouble and wanting to have their, their hooks into your career come to us. We are desperate for someone of your caliber. That's they're building a really good stable of content. I'm really keen. I, I'm, I'm doing more uh, now that, well, of course it's snowing uh, at 12 to 18 inches today, but you know, I've, if there's one thing that keeps me on the bike that keeps me, you know, having like vegetarian meals when I really just want to go across the street and get a pizza, it's because I want to live long enough to see what this turns into. Apple's doing something really interesting here. Question I have. That's, that's not my only reason to live. I want to assure you. I'm just saying that it's, you know, <laughs> it's a reason. It's a good live. one. If you uh, if you are a fan of old Apple memorabilia, you ought to know a guy named Hap Plain. He works at a Lexus dealership in Monterey, but he's also a collector of vintage Apple gear, and he's selling quite a bit of his collection on eBay. A Mac Portable, Apple's original laptop, the 170, Apple's first PowerBook, a G3 iBook, and a lot of prototypes. Steve, this is, this is th these are the moments. These are the moments where I wish I was filthy rich. <laughs> yeah, yes. Some of them are a little pricey. I, I would have a library. Ten thousand dollars gets you a clear prototype of the Apple Macintosh. You I want have... the I want the, the clear Apple II C. Yeah. I so yeah. want that. <laughs> Steve Wozniak's classic, I uh, cinema display. Let me just let me go look at this. Actually, yeah. Let's see. I mean, I'm so. Let's see what these prices are by now. They're probably a little bit, a little bit steeper. I, it's, it's a it's a I have I used to have I used to be paying a lot of money per month to store all of the really cool old Macs and stuff that I bought I would buy at the MIT flea market on a regular basis it is a sickness you really it's almost like having a boat because yes you can afford the $30 uh, for this Mac SE limited edition but it's going to cost you $90 a month forever to, to keep it and but yeah $15,000 for a clear Mac portable Ooh, I, that's pricey. If if fifteen thousand dollars didn't mean much to me, boy did I boy would I spend that. If if I Ooh, had ninety nine thousand for the Lisa, ninety nine. Yeah. Oh, that's a joke that's, price. No, that's there. There there's so many. There's so, there was somebody on eBay. I bookmarked it because I was fascinated by this listing. Somebody was try, had a factory sealed new in new inbox unopened. Uh, new old stock Apple Lisa mouse that they had something like a thirteen thousand dollar or even a twenty thousand dollar buy it now for, and I would be fascinated to see if there was anybody in this world who was eager to pay that amount of money. All you need is one. <laughs> All you need is one person. This is kind of a kind of amazing. A, a prototype for the Apple iPad first generation four grand, three yeah. grand for a Mac Mini. 
prototype. These prototypes. You wonder where he real. got these. He's been. He's just been hanging around. These are all legally acquired, according to yeah. uh, Gizmodo. They just you get hanging. You get around. in at the. You get in at the right time where there's. You just simply put out ads. How, how do how do certain people have like original Star Wars stormtrooper masks and original Time Fighters? Because there was a time where somebody had someone who worked on that show in 1984 had that in their garage and was shocked that someone would one, wanted to spend a thousand would give them a thousand bucks for it. So and this and this is exactly the time. Uh, I mean, speaking of the MIT flea market, you, you see how these things move in cycles. When I started going to the MIT flea market as a kid, like vintage radios, like the really cool ones, like the Art Deco style, uh, like the, the the church cathedral style, were going for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And then there was like, it's, it's over a three year period, they, the really beautiful Art Deco radio that might have been used as set dressing in the Thin Man that was easy, would easily sell for $500 was now going for 100 than 30 and then the last time i saw radios of any kind i was seeing a table full of just a sign saying i will sell it for five dollars if i think that you will love it and and treat it with respect these because people who grew up with radio were dying off it's us losers who are now in our <laughs> in our 30s and 40s and 50s who are showing nostalgia for the apple uh, powerbook 100 that we had as a kid or the macintosh portable that we couldn't afford as a kid but hey now we've got our kids are out of the house we've already explained to the kids that college is so expensive we can't even afford to send you but now we've got forty thousand dollars that we saved that we're not going to be spending on your college education hey let's have the clear translucent apple 2c so this is this is why all this stuff is now being pulled out of the woodwork because there's an enormous amount of money uh, available for it. Now, no one will buy it 20 years from now because, again, we'll be start start to die off. Uh, but uh, it's it's a wonderful thing to see as as someone who doesn't throw things out, as someone who just finished cleaning out a house after 10 years and say, oh, I would I would have thrown that out five years ago. But now it's collectible. I'm keeping that. Here's the best deal of all four hundred dollars for Steve Wozniak's cinema display complete with the <laughs> fedex label and steve's address on the back yeah. 400 bucks it's a deal Let's a take john a scully autograph power book 100 no thanks that <laughs> <laughs> no no i don't want that one let's uh, take a break we're going to get your picks of the week gentlemen that was from april 5th 2001 that cinema display so it's not exactly late model technology <laughs> we'll get your picks ready in just a second but first a word from rocket mortgage folks if you uh are ready to buy a new house or refinance your existing house, you got to know about Rocket Mortgage from what is officially now the number one lender in the United States in every measurement, every metric. Of course, number one, according to JT Power and customer satisfaction for eight years in a row, but now even number one in terms of volume. They are big. They are the guys, quick in loans. And what I love about them, I'm glad, I'm so happy for their success Dan Harmon and his crew uh, just really love technology. They've done so much to revitalize downtown Detroit. And they want you and me and all us geeks to have something, a loan approval process that fits the 21st century. They realized, you know, Dan said, this is like going back in time when you get a loan. You go to the bank, you have to put on a tie or, you know, nice dress and you have to fill out an application 20 page application and you're still not done because then you go home and you got to go to the attic and find pay stubs and bank statements from years gone by and it's just crazy and and on all of that you still don't find out for weeks sometimes months if you've been approved for a loan now fast forward the 21st century here rocket mortgage from quicken loans it's an entirely online experience about eight minutes from beginning to end actually you can shorten that right now if you Go to rocketmortgage.com slash MacBreak and get the account set up and get started. That'll just take you a few minutes. Then when you see a house you want or you decide, I want to refi before rates go up, you can do this. Oh, just like boom. Just like go fit, just answer a few questions you already know the answer to. No going to the attic, nothing. Just because they have relationships with all the financial institutions, you just give them permission uh, and they will get all the information they need and crunch the numbers and minutes later give you an answer. No wonder they're the number one online mortgage lender. And this is not just in volume, not just J.D. Power. Inside Mortgage Finance said so, too. It's fantastic. Based on your income, your assets, your credit, they'll crunch the numbers. They'll offer you the loans you qualify for. You choose the term, the rate, the down payment. You're going to apply simply. You're going to understand fully every step of the way. No paperwork. You do it all on your phone. 
And then you're going to mortgage confidently because you're working with the best. Rocketmortgage.com slash Mac break. Really a great solution. Bookmark it. Or better yet, just get, get the process started so that when you need it, it's there. They're a really great company offering the perfect way to apply for a mortgage. Rocketmortgage.com slash Mac break. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. We thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support of Mac Break Weekly. Mr. Anako, your pick of the week. Uh, mine's, I really like the interface of this one. This is a, a utility for Mac, the Mac called Unclutter. It is technically a clipboard and file manager, but what what it is is uh, for stuff that you want to have handy, like a you have a file or a text clipping or something, what it does is it uses the, the top of the screen as a drag area. So if you have a file that you want to keep tabs on, meaning that you're going to have to paste into 100 different emails or use all the time, you can just drag it to the top of the menu bar. The unclutter sort of uh, window shade comes down and there's a drag area we can drop it. Uh, if you have uh, images, text clippings, things like that, like you, there's a lot of boilerplate that you happen to use, you can drag it into a clippings area. Uh, and the part that I find most useful is just a place you can take quick notes uh so many times i don't I, I i've got bb edit documents i'm down to like bb edit untitled document number 412 because when i call somebody to make an appointment or i'm calling to like get a, a price quote again on movers or some hot some housework that needs to get done i just remember oh that's right he, she might give me numbers or phone numbers that's the place where i just have a quick a scratch pad scratch pad i think it's a really interesting twist on the on the uh, basic user interface i would like to see other apps think about this when you talk about services that need to go across apps and across the entire mac experience i think it's really really super interesting uh it's 10 bucks but there's a free trial if you go to uncluttera.app.com instead of down downloading it from the app store uh i have not bought it yet i've only installed it about a week and a half ago but i've used it enough that i might have to just Pay the ten bucks out of out of simple decency because I found it so useful. Very cool, Renee Ritchie, pick of the week. So I have a tip this time more than a pick, and it's it follows on. Uh, Joanna Stern did an excellent report for the Wall Street Journal where there's these all these people. I have family and friends and even uh, workmates who are convinced that Facebook was spying on them and using the microphone or Instagram yeah, was using yeah, the microphone yeah. to listen to them because you would say something and then all of a sudden you get ads for it. But as Joanna and some other people have done, they've gone through and it's found that they've just they're really good at sort of uh, coagulating or or annexing all of these other data sources. So you have the data that you get through Facebook and the Facebook pixel, and you have data that they get through supermarket chains and all these huge data aggregation companies, and they put it all together and they can get an incredibly accurate picture of what, who you are and what you want. And because they don't, they're not always clear about where that stuff comes from, it can feel creepy. It can feel like they're literally following you around the internet. So one of the writers on iMore, Joe Keller, put together a, a really awesome um, article on if you are bothered by this. I mean, some people like the idea of having um, really highly tailored advertising. Other people do find it super creepy. So if you're one of those people, he goes through how you can opt out, not just of the Facebook tracking, but of the tracking from the major aggregators like Axion, Epsilon, Experian, Oracle, Quantium, and uh, KBM Group, and how you can do settings in the iPhone to limit tracking, and how you can use plugins on other devices to do it. Um, and I know, like, I, I know this is happening. It's one of those things where, like, you can be aware of it until sometimes you see an ad and, and just be shocked going, how did that get there? Uh, and if you've experienced that sort of feeling, even if you don't end up implementing this stuff, just going through the process gives you a feeling like you have a little bit of control back over your destiny uh, and you have a little bit of a, of a tinfoil on your hat uh, and you can choose <laughs> to exercise it when you want to. And that sort of takes away the stress of it happening. At least I found that uh, for me and a lot of the people that I shared it with. Very nice. It's always good to know how to protect yourself. Great information. Yeah, and again, some people won't care, but if you do care, then yeah. you should know how to speak yeah. about it. That's kind of my feeling. I don't care, but I understand if somebody does care, and you certainly should have the tools and the ability to to, to control it yourself. Well, it's, I was shocked. I was going right. to I was going to Ottawa to visit my sister, and I opened Instagram, and it said, uh, "Use OpenTable to reserve your Ottawa restaurant <laughs> Ooh, tonight." That's and I never said I was going to Ottawa. I said it in one phone call to her and one text message to Serenity Caldwell, and I had no idea how I did it. And it turned out that I think three out of the last five years. I'd gone to Ottawa and posted in Facebook from Ottawa, so it oh, assumed that I'd be doing that again. But oh, it took me like God. like 30 minutes to figure that out. And in that time, I'm like, no, no, it really is listening to me. <laughs> Knowledge is power. Wow. Yep.
Alex Lindsay, what do you got for us today? I got I got two quick things. Uh, one is we were just talking about chargers. Uh, I, I got a new charger and I, I, I'm constantly upgrading chargers. I spend a lot of time on the road. And um, I pretty much stick now in the family of the Anchor. So Anchor now has a 10. Look at that. That's 10. Holy cow. Harmonica. You can put it in. What's yeah, the total wattage it. that thing can... Uh... So total wattage is 60 watts or 12 amps. That means okay. that you, up to five of these is going to get the 2.4 uh, amps per um, right. per channel. Um, but what it does mean is that it, so it'll start going down if you start adding more than that. But but one of the things for me is being able to, you know, I'm, I come in a lot of times from traveling and I'll go into a hotel room or wherever. I'll sit down. I just want to plug everything in and I want to walk away and know that it's all like I don't want to have to trade around and figure it out. I know that uh, if I plug in more than five, I'm not going to get the, you know, the the fastest charge. But it's mostly I just don't want to, have to think about it anymore. I just want to walk away and, and have it done. So um, it's got a little switch. There's a couple of important things when I look for chargers. The switch doesn't matter. In fact, I think that. That, that's the only thing I don't like about it. Um, the Because uh, once I plug it in, I, it does have to have a figure eight on the back because um, I lose my figure eights and I usually can steal them from TVs. So, um, <laughs> if I, if I, so you steal it so, from the uh, TV. Well, that's good. I do. I don't now I know why my TV never TV. works. It's some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, 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 never, I never actually. I, I never hysterical. use TVs in hotel rooms, uh, but I do use their figure eight to either plug in my my computer. Like if I don't have a, an adapter in, in Japan or something like that, or, or not Japan, but in other places, I will uh, just pull it out of the back of the TV and put it into my Apple charger. So anyway, so the figure eight is important. And then a light on the front. So there's a little light on the front. I don't believe in buying chargers that don't have these little lights. Um, because you end up with this whole like you plug it in and you plug something else in and you can't figure out why it's not charging. <laughs> you need to know did the chart is it getting to this and then is it getting to the next thing? So um, so I won't buy a charger without a light. And so um, so anyway so that's the anchor. The other one the other one I have to admit is Lisa's fault. Um, uh, my other recommendation, Leo, is the pop in a cob. The pop the, the oh uh, I love this. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, did my she goodness. give you so, some? She did. <laughs> she gave me some when I was on, on screensavers on Saturday. And uh it is so Isn't the best? My kids loved it. it I thought cool it was it kind of a it's kind cool. of a gimmicky so it's it's so it's I. popcorn on the cob. And I thought, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, this is the kind of thing you get the, the ye old country store and it's just terrible. Right. It isn't. It's the best popcorn you've ever had. I don't and understand you, and you how. Put it, and here's the thing is, is, you put it. You put it in a in a paper brown, bag. It comes it. with the paper bag included, by the way. It comes right, with the and then you bag. throw it in. You, you throw it in the microwave, and so it's microwave popcorn that isn't radioactive. No, you know, like it, it tastes like, like real. It tastes better than popcorn you pop on the stove. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, and and because um, I have one of those little things with a little cur you know turn, you, you little. So you, uh, you crank wrap it up in the paper bag. Now she butters it before she puts it in the paper bag. So. The, I, I don't know that, if that's I did a that good idea. Time. Yeah, I did it the first time, and then I, I had a bag that was all covered in butter. Right. I put too, I probably put too much <laughs> butter on it, so I was just like, ah, I just pop it, and then I add the Melt butter the later. butter and add it but, later. But exactly. You, you know, and and I guess they say that far, a lot of farmers markets are now putting these in, so you cost a lot less. You can get them for like five bucks for six. We bought like Lisa that, bought one hundred. <laughs> is this like bone-in ribeye, Leo? Does it increase the taste? It it is actually the best tasting popper you ever had. I think the brown bag is part of it. It doesn't no, have any know, of that yeah, weird industrial so oils. Good. She yeah, thinks it's yeah, best because it leaves the uh, husk on the cob. Because So it just pops off the cob, and the few kernels that don't use just kind of brush them off the cob. You throw the cob out, uh, and then yeah. you have this popcorn, and it's really good popcorn. What's also good it's is it doesn't really make good. a mass quantity. So yeah. it's just right yeah. for one setting, you know, one sitting. Otherwise, I will overeat popcorn. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It is so it's good. Too good. So anyway, so that's, oh, very old. Now, did, did, did she as say as fun to make as it is to eat? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Like Jiffy Pop. It's really quick. What is the uh, brand it's, name on that? Um, I think it's called Pop Pop and Cobs, and there's a lot of people that make oh, them, but the one that this that, is the that one Lisa I would get. Pop yeah, because this is p o p p i n cobs dot com. I don't know where she found it. She might have seen it on Instagram. I think it probably is an Instagram ad. Uh, but she bought so much of it. That's why she's giving it away. <laughs> it's the best popcorn I've ever any, had. I have to admit, if I bought a lot of it, I would not give it away. I, this is, it, it does look like it gets much more affordable because I think yeah, when you yeah, buy a handful of them. It's expensive if you only buy two. This is, the, this is the only place I've seen where you can buy like 10 or 15 because they're like $4 each if you buy them on Amazon. How many did you um, buy, Lisa? After, she bought them on Uncommon Goods. That's a catalog. And I was wrong. I only ordered the 25. You didn't? Oh, you only bought 50 of them, not 100 of them. Okay. 
We only bought 50. Let's get that right. But look, they have a wholesale uh, division at Pop and Cobb, so maybe you ought to go there and just arrange to have a supply. She's been getting out samples. But the Isn't price it is good? much better. The, the, the 10-pack is much better. It's, for for $15.99, I mean, that's now starting to get competitive with your regular microwave yeah. popcorn. And it's way more healthy than your regular microwave popcorn. Um, and, uh, and, and it tastes a lot of fun. better. My kids it tastes, it was the best thing. It tastes like you I popped it, it in, the, in, the, in, the, in the popper. It's phenomenal. Yeah. And if you don't want butter, well, right. then you got dry pop. But it's... Uh, but I we put a lot of butter and salt on it because we're and bad. it tastes better than hot air. I mean, I, you know, it's like it's much not like better. It's empty. Yeah, there's something about it that that's really good. The only the only popcorn I like better than than this is uh, in Zimbabwe. They make this. They roast like regular maize and turn it into popcorn, and it's like this the most gnarly popcorn ever. And that's probably the only one that that I've had that's better than this. So it's close. Can I, can I can I just as long as we're talking about popcorn, I still think my my former Mac pick of the week, the stir the stir crazy uh, popcorn popper, is still tops. It brings the oh, best popcorn I hate that, that I've ever thing tasted. So much, Andy. I bought two of them after Why? your recommendation, and I've thrown them out. It? One okay. broke. The it it gets hot butter everywhere. It's a mess. Okay, well, it's the worst, single worst way to make popcorn, Andy. Okay, I, I first of all, I don't, I don't melt pop, I don't melt butter in there. Well, you're so supposed to put some in the lid, different. right? And well, if you, if you want, in. if you want butter, right? Exactly. And that that's clearly not going to work. But I have <laughs> well, never. It's supposed used, to work that I've way. This, I've, well, if you want, okay, if you want butter that way, if you want to be, have to like carve butter off of everything, I prefer to a. I don't. Uh, this is this is my the popcorn in my house takes the place of buying even when we went super 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 bowl week and you buy oh, ten bags popcorn. of Doritos for yeah. three dollars. Yeah. I can, okay, it's 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 not the uh, popping popcorn in oil is not necessarily the healthiest thing ever, but I don't salt it. I just you know it's great. But I've had the same that same popper for a couple of years. It still works great. It the only thing I wish it were immersible uh, for that's, for cleaning. You can't it's, clean it. It's yes, the worst, you can. It's the worst just, thing I've ever just, seen. I'll give you your <laughs> twenty three dollars back. Cheap little Pla this little metal, it's like a coat hanger that spins around slowly, does nothing. That's all you, oh no. No, this okay. is the one uh, I like. This sir, is the whirly pop. That's I, a real pop. Put on, pop. put on your AR glasses because <laughs> I need to virtually reach out with a leather glove, smack you in the face, and go Aaron Burr on your Hamilton butt. Oh, man. I will not. I will not sit here and let the stir crazy popcorn popper <laughs> that has given me so much pleasure during movies of the past two years be besmirched, <laughs> sir. I will see you at dawn. I'm sending you some cobs. And by the okay. way, after you're done with the cobs, they have other uses. You can throw them at children. Yes. Get me more popcorn. Uh, yeah, no, I because you really sold me on the stir crazy. I got one. Uh, no, I, you don't. You don't have to. I'm sorry you didn't like it. I'm, I'm glad that you're I'm glad stirring that, that something crazy I wrong, Leo. You bought it. Wasn't a twenty. It was the twenty-two dollar one, and not like the eight thousand dollar. Yeah, whatever. it was inexpensive. That was the good news. Um, but yeah, I, I have. I don't know. I just. I'm just now. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I just think this is not a great design for a popcorn popper. Yeah. And popcorn. do we really want another appliance on our counter just to pop popcorn? If it makes a big well, now, bowl now of that we popcorn have, that's as crunchy and fresh as the, I see. I, maybe maybe there's some nostalgia because my my memories of, of popcorn are <laughs> mom is taking me and the kids to see the movie. So of course we're making like big yeah. big big yeah. like Roche Brothers grocery bags full yeah. of like stove pop popcorn, and we were simply walking in, not even pretending to hide them because we have the guys. Damn it, we were entitled. Well, maybe my to mistake is using the built-in butter well. <laughs> See, I I would I would guess that I don't do not I'm, use the built-in butter well. I have I have never used the built-in but even when I had a hot air popper, I would never use the built-in butter well because <laughs> I will not as great. And this is this is saying something. As much as I like butter, butter is wonderful. Butter is great. I don't like butter so much that it's worth afterwards having to clean out oh, the, what a dump, mess. the the dump oh, scoop. God, of a what a mess! Hot, <laughs> and the idea is you turn you pop it and then you turn it upside down. And then the popcorn's in the bowl, but if you use the butter well, the butter's okay. in your lap as well, which that's is big, not that's a big. But then it's yeah. hard to it's hard to sift the whole butter. The whole it's hard. To, I always do the butter just in a glass or something. Well, you know, and the thing is, once the popcorn's the popped, the stir microwave. just ineffectually spins around. It's not moving anything, so it's well, not it's, like well, it's see, no, mixing it's, in it's, the it's, butter or anything. What you're getting at is that that means it's you, that's you've just praised the metal stir <laughs> because it has done its job. There is no there are no uncooked kernels <laughs> at the bottom because the stir was there. You are insulting a, a, a piece of 
of metal that's done nothing but work hard for your best interests. <laughs> well, mine stopped working entirely. So. Now, but, no. but, but what's the most, <laughs> what, what, most importantly, what do you put on it other than the butter? Like once you add it. Butter and salt. What do you, what more do you need, the, right? For a I put, I, I'm telling you, get the cobs. You don't need any implements if you have a it, microwave. It works oh, very well, actually, nicely. Oh, well, that's well, that's a problem because I don't. Uh, the one thing that the one you appliance that did not. Ah. I didn't. I didn't take the bread machine because no, ever since I, I got it ten years ago, and now I've re figured out how to make it myself. I didn't take the microwave because of the sous vide. I just don't use it for. I used to use this, the microwave used to be for. Damn it! I, I can take a half hour for a break for dinner, and then I have to go back to work. I don't want to mess with with food. I was only for the past year and a half. I was only using it when I had forgotten to like clean out a bowl of beans, and the beans had like dried all hard and caramelized. I need to boil water in the bowl to loosen them and clean them. And so now I've decided that perhaps I will clean the bean bowls like promptly and therefore i can keep this appliance I, I i for the first time in since college i do not have a microwave oven wow you are very uh amish thank you uh, no, I'm, <laughs> hey I, I i put it to you that if it was not in julia child's kitchen in the 1970s 100 percent. you have several spring form molds no doubt for your aspic Yes. Andy Anako, you'll find him at the Chicago Sun Times and at CWOB.com. That's where he hangs his many hats. And of course, each week here and on the Material Podcast, where he talks about Android in the same animated fashion. It's amazing. I don't know how he does it. That I, one's have on. too much, I have too much love to be contained <laughs> within simply one platform. One, one, one operating system. That's at relay.fm. Thank you, Andy. Thank you to Renee Thanks. Ritchie. His work is at imore.com. And of course, that Vector Podcast is a must listen. Or watch now. You got video now, which is awesome. Uh, I M O R E dot com slash vector. Thank you, Renee. Thank you so much, Leo. Have a wonderful day. And Alex Lindsay back to work in the nation's capital. God only knows what he's getting himself up to, but I hear there's an opening in the Secretary of State. I don't, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's what he's That'd been be doing fun. out there. Yeah. yeah. Pixelcore.com is where to follow him. And by the way, they're on Patreon now. Go to patreon.com slash pixelcore and you can. Be a, come a Pixel Core member once again. They've opened it up for membership, and that's fantastic. Yeah, and we're we're going to be doing um, we're going to be doing actually a stream from DC, so people can see a little bit about that oh, on Thursday, nice. and then um, and then Fred, who was on Screensavers, is going to do a Q and A with our Patreon members on Friday. So um, so it's an action packed week. Very nice. Oh, and finally, by the way, we we the the virtual version of our sale is going on, so people still go up and sign up and say they want to be on the mailing list. I think like eight hundred people want to buy stuff from us oh so, you're gonna um, you're gonna start, blow it out to the bare walls i got that uh i'm so happy about that ex3 and it, you were no, so nice not. you included the case the battery charger extra memory i mean i that 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 is i have now i have a pa an eng package that's awesome <laughs> did you get a check for go. that have we paid you for that uh i i don't know if to ask shannon i unless you i i, I have tell I shannon if i have it i'll come down with the cash okay sounds good <laughs> i only have it wrapped in a rubber band Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. We do Mac Break Weekly Tuesdays around about 11 a.m. It's right after iOS today, so it varies. Maybe 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, now we're uh, in daylight saving time, so that's 1800 UTC. Note the new time. You could tune in and watch at, at uh, well, I was going to say YouTube.com slash twit. That's true. But actually, YouTube and all of the various ways you can watch live are featured on our own website, twit.tv slash live. So that's probably the place to go. Pick the stream that you like the most. You can also participate in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. Lovely bunch of people there chatting away. It's always nice to see Emily the Strange and Vetman and Synapse, Amon Ra and Virgil and Scooter X and Goodly and Toad Sloth. They all have such strange names. Describes <laughs> them aptly in almost every case, I think. Uh, if you're not watching live, always can watch on demand. Get your uh, audio and video at the website, twit.tv slash mbw, or subscribe wherever podcasts are distributed. If you want to join us in studio, Nathan did. Nice to see you. He sat through the whole show, I'm proud to say. All you have to do is email tickets at twit.tv. Now, my friend, I'm sad to say, time to get back to work, because break time is over. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>